to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I shared with us here, for those of us who were not here, please listen attentively. And by the way, those following us online, we love you, we honor you, you are part of us. That there are three platforms upon which impact is established. Please listen. When God is ready to reveal himself to a man, when God is ready to do business with a man upon the earth, there are only three platforms as revealed from scripture upon which that man will access capacity to make impact platform number one encounters don't forget this they are not cheap they are not basic at all encounters the first platform that grants a man access to work with god is encounter everybody say encounter encounters are very very important because they birth spiritual realities in our spirit by encounters i don't just mean visionary encounters even encounters through the word an experience that makes god real to you an experience that makes a dimension of god real to you it could be aided through a vision it could be aided through a supernatural experience but regardless of what platform it comes through any experience capable of making a dimension of god become real to you is called an encounter true encounters produce conviction not memory conviction a true encounter listen it doesn't just leave you with a memory it produces conviction if you tell me you've had an encounter with a dimension of God, I will know. I don't care whether you claim you had a vision or a scripture opened up to you. When it is opened up to you, the first time that you had an encounter is unusual conviction. It translates to faith. If God gives you an encounter of his healing power, it produces conviction. If God gives you an encounter of a dimension of spiritual reality, it must come with conviction say conviction there are so many people in the body of christ who are not convicted about the things they teach it's one thing to teach from a theological standpoint and that's important it's one thing to teach from a sociological standpoint but it's one thing to teach from a depth of conviction it's not by shouting it's not the volume of your voice it's not the the repetition of your grammar conviction is a realm where you're speaking your listeners know that the things you are saying are true with you say encounters we must crave for encounters you know people who don't really understand this thing think that all we are advocating is that people begin to have out of body experiences and they begin to propose as though you are telling people to not pay attention to the word of god to now begin to contend for angelic encounters heavenly encounters as above the word of god no the bible says god appeared um to samuel in shiloh by his word are we together he appeared by his word so an encounter doesn't necessarily mean until you see an angel and he says promise i was sent from heaven to you that from today you take the healing power of God to the nations. And then every time you stand, you say, I remember what the angel said. Yes, that's an encounter. But there are men like Reinhard Bonke who had encounters. They never had any visionary experience. When you listen to Reinhard Bonke's story, 
He will tell you that a day came. They brought in a great man of God to preach. The man preached the first day and told all the sick people to come by the second day. And the morning of the second day, Reinhard Bonke was excited because they were going to wheel all kinds of sick people. In Africa, if you tell people to bring the sick, they are obedient. They will bring the sick. Whether they are related to them or not, they will. that sense of nationhood will kick in. They will drag every sick person. And so they brought those people and the preacher told Reinhard Bonke, he said, the Lord told me to pack up my things and get out of this place. You will preach and you will heal. Renard Bonke said, no, 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 no. You can't be playing. I mean, you are the great man of God. I'm only here to encourage you. And he said, I'm sorry, I have to be on my way. Renard Bonke said he cried and cried because his ministry was about to be shredded into pieces. And then all of a sudden, that's an encounter. The word of the Lord comes. You don't read it. It comes. In the fifth day of the fifth month of this, the word of the Lord came. There's the one you try to get. But the one that comes... Is what produces encounter and Renard Bonke just looked and said Lord I will go and do the preaching and you will do the healing and that was it a man who has produced a ministry that has liberated Africa encounters you can be reading a scripture you can be reading John 3 16 but one day the word of the Lord will come to you for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him when that encounter comes you can sing songs like yes Jesus loves me you sang it in Sunday school it was not an encounter it was a recitation but when it comes as an encounter you will sing that song and you are crying and somebody looks at you and says ah, ah, you are deeper than this and he said that's the point it has not come to you, but it came to me. Are we together? Encounters. My life is a testimony of encounters. I can point to you exact periods in my life where certain things happen that birthed certain convictions that have been responsible for releasing certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities. May God give us encounters. The meeting is called koinonia and the first thing you should get is an encounter if you are a prayer leader without an encounter a pastor without an encounter an apostle a prophet whatever you call yourself a time will come your lack of assurance will become evident to those you are leading are we together it's not by bold face bold face is not encounter i know god will show up please encounters produce convictions unto death but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded say god give me encounters say it again god give me encounters you believe god has called you into the ministry of kingdom wealth but you are not sure you don't have encounters so you are hoping you will be rich to prove to people that you were called into the ministry of kingdom financing you lack encounters listen an encounter makes your conviction as your primary evidence not physical results your conviction becomes your primary evidence so god can call you to the nations as at the time you are speaking the only other listener is your wife but you still say god called me to the nations i love men of convictions conviction conviction we we live in a result driven a carnal result driven generation where until you produce physical results that can be seen people oftentimes will not believe you so you will need encounters let me tell you so that when things do not happen the way you want you are still left with your encounter job said though he slay me Yet will I trust him. I know him. The God in the mountain is still God in the valley. Let me tell you why many people gas out. Many pastors, many preachers. I've seen a lot of preachers say, God sent me to so-so-so city. When the city became too hot and whipped them, they left quietly. Encounters give you stamina. 
Encounters give you stamina. Encounters give you stamina. He said, if you turn aside in the day of battle, he said, your strength is small. One guy came and met me one time and he said, God has called him into the apostolic ministry. I said, congratulations. A few months later, it became too hot for him and he came back. He said, I get it now. I'm an evangelist. I said, go. I told him, I said, go for a retreat. A retreat that produces an encounter. Because he thought it's just in a name. Usually when it becomes too hot, people change. Persecution. <laughs> we think the name will give you access for preaching fast. So you say, I am prophet A and B and C. And then the heavy controversy that lands on your head, you quietly remove it. And say, I am pastor Joshua Selman. <laughs> Say encounters. May God give us encounters. One big secret in my life is that God used encounters to convince me of my call. Solid encounters. Both visionary encounters, word encounters, prophetic encounters. That's why no matter what anybody says or does, I will never even pray about it. That's how certain I am. when you try to explain things to people you don't have conviction enough please talk to someone by your side and say get conviction get conviction strong conviction are we together strong conviction we doubt and we fall by the wayside and we make a mess of and you know it's a terrible thing to brag so much before people and then you are now forced to defend your advocacy but the encounter that will sponsor your confidence is not there if i believe god has called me to carry the healing anointing and there are hundred wheelchairs and i pray for them and nobody gets healed i tell them may god bless you and uh, have a nice day and i'll go to sleep and someone says but man of god ah, it's either you are backsliding or something has happened i will go back and challenge myself to rise greater but i will not go back saying god if it's that i didn't hear you well can you explain to me again no we're laughing but i'm, I'm trusting that god is speaking to us encounters do you know that the world follows men of conviction if i am a thief today there is a there is a certainty about my stealing that will force you to say look this guy knows what he's doing he's worth hearing terrorists are men of encounter and conviction they have met spirits the spirits told them certain things so while the government is trying to advise them and say why don't you become nice social beings they say all of you are confused and we are out to kill you and bomb you and you say are you sure you'll do this yes what of your life what of your wife and your family and they say to hell with them conviction from an encounter what encounter do you have that sponsors your confidence oh i saw god give a jimmy this it's not enough reason you must have a personal encounter we lack this a lot i'm taking out time to help you understand this we lack this a lot in the body of christ you can borrow joshua selman's revelation listen to one koinonia message and just write everything out and preach in a conference and say god said there is this and that and that but you know there is a way people look through you and they see that even you as you are preaching you are just saying lord i hope i'm right I'm about to pray Joshua Selman prayed after that message and now I'm about to pray after my own then you stand and speak and say I see angels everywhere whether or not you are seeing them because you thought I was lying so now you say I see angels overflow are you ready say yes no encounter that's how preachers disgrace themselves convention after convention till everybody in your circle stops bringing you for meetings because you have a track record of copying with no results someone can guide you 
but the ultimate journey is that you meet christ you meet him not just theologically but you have an encounter say amen, amen. it's good to know the god of joshua selman but stay until that god becomes your god the people told the woman the the samaritan woman he said we believe you now not just because you told us we have seen him for ourselves you came and introduced us but ah talking with him he did something to us in the name of jesus may god give us encounters over your business over your life over your family so that when you go and you look at your cgpa and you look at it from 4.5 god forbid but you drop to 3.5 and you see three carryovers you don't suddenly say ah and god said i'll be a leader god you must come and you see some prayers are, are revelations of the doubts you've been nursing for many years so what you have feared secretly now comes upon you and you say god but you told me now you told me eh? You told me that this brother will marry me. This one that he has done introduction. What are you saying? Don't make noise until you have the burning bush experience. We brag too much on hearsay. I watch preachers talk sometimes and I'm saying, be careful though. Jesus is Lord, but his Lordship is exercised with wisdom and understanding. If you are not healed in this meeting, except I'm not called. Hey. At the end of the meeting, only two people are healed. Encounters. Encounters. I crave for them. I create the atmosphere for them. I desire them in my life. Encounters. It's not about reading the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. It's not about quoting scripture as important as it is. It's not about a display of Greek and Hebrew words. Encounters produce convictions. Convictions produce faith. Faith moves mountains. It's not what you do. It's the conviction behind what you do. Number two. The second platform upon which men do business with God is a comprehension or access to the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom an encounter is one you meet a person in an encounter but you must comprehend the principles of the kingdom is god helping us tonight your knowledge of the principles the working knowledge of the principles of the word of god is another platform for you to activate a life and a destiny of impact so what principles do you know it says and i will give you the keys right and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven king james says whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven amplified says whatever you allow whatever you disallow the power to release realities and the power to close doors is called the key of david your life there is a dimension of impact in your life hear me brothers and sisters that is a product of the mysteries that you know this is what i define as dominion You've heard me say it again and again. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. We've spent this year, as much as many other years, dissecting these mysteries. Under the teaching Secrets of the Kingdom, the series, get it, Secrets of the Kingdom, right? I taught you six mysteries that control mighty, dramatic manifestations upon the earth mystery number one i taught you is the law of surrender the law of surrender that this is the mystery that holds the key to unusual amounts of unction upon the lives of people complete surrender complete surrender mystery number two 
is the power of a transformed mind. For as he thinketh in his heart, right? So he's so he is i told you realities are first formed in the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical realm so you never try to change anything by physically trying to alter it you alter it from the realm of the spirit and it changes mystery number three is the law of competence seest thou a man diligent in his business he says he shall not stand before mean men he shall stand before kings are we together we we did this very very mystery number four i explained to you the secret of coming out of situations that are about to swallow you in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path that's what the bible says he said trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding a time must come in a man's life where you face challenges that are bigger than your current level of exposure you don't know anything about that challenge nor how to go out at that time the key is to acknowledge him he says in all thy ways acknowledge him praise is a weapon for acknowledgement so as you begin to acknowledge him there is a promise attached he said he will make straight your path mystery number five is the mystery I call it the irrefutable mystery of destiny helpers. Men and women anointed, commanded, instructed to appear in your destiny and take you to the next level. I'm doing a recap. It, it, please, I don't know how to plead with you. Believe what I'm teaching you and understand it and you will change your life. There are three kinds of destiny helpers. I shared with us the other time number one they are called divine connectors they do not have the ability to help you but they can link you to where your help is divine connectors number two men of influence they have the capacity both the economic power both the governmental power right the intellectual prowess to endorse you and open up doors for you an example of such a person is Joseph of Arimathea. A man who, through his influence, Jesus was ordered to come down from the cross and buried in a tomb. You need them. And then number three, faithful men. The third kind of destiny helpers, faithful men. 400 of these men came to David. David was running, he was a failure, he was broke, he was on his way, ministry had packed up, but 400 men came and they entered a covenant with themselves to be loyal to him until he became king. And then the last mystery, which in my opinion is the most powerful, maybe secondary to only an encounter, is the law of honor. Hebrews 7.7 7. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the greater. I told you that there is a system in the body of Christ. Nobody blesses himself. You cannot lift yourself to a new dimension. Are we together? No matter how anointed you are, no matter how great you are, at every point in your life, there are people below you trusting God for your grace to lift them. There are people above you there are those who already represent what your future aspirations are and there are people who you represent their future aspiration the recognition of that is the key to living where you are to the next level you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly there are human beings that represent systems the recognition of what they represent alongside the possibilities god has opened unto them will bring you into their realm of reality honor is the key to access every time a door closes over your life dishonor closed it and every time a door opens over you honor opened it so there are many other mysteries that we have to learn i can teach you mystery upon mystery upon mystery one of it is he that wants friends must first show himself friendly now you read these things as verses 
until God opens your eyes. Then you will see the reason why many people never have the gift of men. Because they are not friendly. To be friendly does not mean to be a clown. To be friendly means to be hospitable. Are we together? It says that you neglect not being hospitable for in it. Many have entertained angels unaware. It was through hospitality Sarah trapped the angels. And they gave a revelation about the inevitable doom of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it was on the strength of that hospitality that Abraham was given access to that mystery. And with it he rescued Lot. Praise the Lord. The third platform upon which men receive from God and create lives of notable impact in the earth is covenant connection. Covenant connection. Covenant connection. May God make us believe what I'm sharing. May God make us believe it. May God make us believe it in the name of Jesus Christ. Covenant connection. The Bible speaking about men and describing the nature and the character of their success says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the, sin, the seat of the scornful. He says, but his delight, what? Is in the law of the Lord. And on that law he meditates day and night. Then he says, he shall be. This is how his success will be in the similitude of that of a tree. If the Bible says you shall be like something, study that thing. It says the success of a believer will be like that of a tree. How does a tree rise? Number one, it is planted. From the stem that rises, branches begin to come. All branches do not move in the same direction. But regardless of their direction, the strength of the branches are determined by the strength of the vine that they are connected to. They may face different directions and the trees can grow so tall, taller than buildings. And the trees can stand for years and decades. Branches fall and rise. They are pruned and they come again. But the stem connected to the root remains intact. Any branch that cuts itself outside of the vine dies. You don't water the branches. You water the roots. And it has a system. Are we together? Trying to pour water on leaves is a waste of time. A system. So he said he shall be like a tree. Listen. Our personal spiritual growth is based on relationship. But kingdom advancement is based on covenant. Please you have to understand this. Our personal work with God is based on relationship. However kingdom advancement is based on covenant. Not the covenant of Moses. Not the covenant of the New Testament. I'm not talking old and new covenant. A covenant is a system through which God guarantees a continuity of his program. Now listen, listen, look up please. Let me teach you this. Get it, get it in the name of Jesus Christ. The way the kingdom works is through the principle of covenant and alignment. Please listen. So what happens is that every dispensation has a dimension of spiritual realities that they should experience which is part of the ongoing unfolding of the multifaceted dimension of god are we together so every dispensation has a dimension of god air marked for them to experience but the nature and the character of that revelation is such that when god wants to come in in a dimension to a territory and a dispensation his first assignment is to find a man say a man when he finds a man he enters a personal covenant with that man that personal covenant becomes the platform upon which that dimension of god is revealed to the dispensation no other person will access that dimension 
in that dispensation out of alignment to the person in covenant with God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. God will not reveal the same thing to everybody. He will reveal the same thing to one person and direct every other person who wants to experience that part of him to align with the covenant that he has had upon that man or upon that system. Are we together? The yardstick that he uses to bring men to that experience is called an election of grace. It has nothing to do necessarily with their personal yieldedness. It is part of his sovereignty and his predeterminate counsel. So God calls men. Every time you are talking about redemption, the journey of redemption and the doctrine of Christ starts from Abraham, not Noah, not Adam. Are we together? Whether it's Christianity, whatever kind of religion, the moment they are communicating the doctrine of Christ, the genesis of the blueprint of the doctrine of Christ starts from Abraham. God called one man to come out of a place called Awe of the Chaldeans, Genesis chapter 12, right? He wanted to use his father, Terah, but something happened and he, the, the, you know, the baton passed on to Abraham and he called Abraham an idol worshiper out of all of the Chaldeans and he called him and he said look I am calling you out come out of your father's house your kindred and all of that and I will do certain things with you and Abraham obeyed him there are so many people in the Bible that represents God's covenant point they are portals that open their dispensation and their generations to certain dimensions of God that law did not die with the coming and the going of Jesus Christ. There are still men today that represent new dimensions of God or continuity of his program. Hmm. Are we together? Alongside your encounter, alongside your comprehension of the laws of the spirit, your covenant connection to men or systems that represent the continuity of God in that dimension but this is where Satan cheats a lot of people please listen to me carefully this is something else I'm talking about but we need to understand this God asked me to reiterate these things you know why we honor men we honor men for many reasons number one is the anointing they carry number two the sacrifice that they have with god that has brought certain levels of possibilities in their life number three is the spiritual system that they represent when david wanted permission to fight goliath do you know the question saul asked he said whose son is this in other words i want to know the tribe he came from so that i know whether this can be possible this boy is too young i'm a king but I need to know where he's coming from so we can trace the history of the spiritual deposits God left with that tribe. And when they found out that David was of the Benjamin, he said, go and fight. David came to him and he said, Goliath, I know you think I'm a small boy, but there is a tribe standing before you, not a person. Watch what happens to you now. Goliath said, am I a dog? David said, we will we'll see who, who is the dog. I have seen people in my life who never become billionaires, but they never lack, whether they pray or not. Even when they are not tithing, it's a covenant. There is something they are connected to, whether they know it or not, that affords them those spiritual possibilities. <sighs> Open our eyes, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I have seen pastors who when they stand to teach you will almost sleep but when they call upon the god of heaven he shows up it's not personal encounter in fact many of them may have a lot of character defaults and while you are talking about their character it's like god owes them his presence they call him and he must show up there is a covenant he respects he says my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my mouth are we together so some of our people although they were in the village with witchcraft they had 16 children one woman 16 children and yet 
after 16 children the woman is still standing her stomach is still as flat as an arrow you wonder whether the children grew in a basket it's a covenant brothers and sisters it's not about knowing what drug to take some things are spiritual when they are spiritual they show and you see it do you believe what i'm teaching you hmm. oh you better believe it so that when you look at a man you know that not every result you see was initiated by his personal altar when you know that there will be no room for pride when god begins to give you result because you will know that certain dimensions of your result are purely an issue of alignment purely an issue of what alignment spiritual alignment there was a time for instance in living faith it still happens where there were strange testimonies 2005 2006 creative those ones were is what the bible calls the walking of miracles not testimonies where a man would tell you i was a cleaner and by sunday the owner of the company said he's leaving nigeria and they made me a ceo strange testimonies So you see somebody who drag himself and he's sleeping while they are preaching sleeping they say in jesus name he never says amen he's even angry but something still came on him with the anger he turns and he leaves and goes back and the landlord says you are staying five years in this house the rent is is free and the man says i don't understand what is happening to me two weeks later they call him and say there is a job we want to give you and he says i don't understand there is a covenant when god looks at you he sees the covenant There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. if you know this thing i'm teaching you you can you can make it's not a license to sin you can make the worst blunder on earth quarter to shame the covenant kicks in and god says i remember <sighs> jonah jonah was running as a rebel but god used what happened to describe what will happen to jesus jonah he says the same way jonah was in the belly of the fish was that a good testimony yet jesus used it god had solomon for the sake of his father david when solomon dedicated the temple he lifted the temple and he said lord i enter a covenant with you that whoever faces this temple and pray whether their faith level is there or not hearken to them so in the days of daniel they signed a policy and they said nobody should pray daniel knew that if he will use his personal faith he's a human being the truth about it is that it was not just his personal spiritual life so he opened the window to jerusalem and he started praying and listen that was why he was sure when they were about to throw him in the lion's den god did not show up because of daniel he showed up because of the covenant what have you enjoyed in your life because of covenant connection some of us every good thing that has happened to you has come because of your your personal push which is good but brothers and sisters the demand that life will place on you will be greater than your spiritual life and if you have to wait till you become strong you may not even live for that to happen there are people in koinonia here they are not tightening, but they are having strange results they even them they are doubting they are saying what's wrong something is covering you it's a covenant break every chain break every chain those who know this do business with god upon the earth and open strange doors strange doors strange doors living faith redeemed and mfm there are three ministries that have seen them with such a strange covenant of of ownership 
they can enter any land regardless of the vow the government made not to give them land they must give them land as much as they want it's a revelation are we together brothers and sisters some things are not just about fasting and prayer there is an advantage God placed in the body and if you are not aware of it you may never step into certain dimensions never step into certain dimensions I came to show you certain things God said I should teach it again if God says I should teach it it means many of us did not get it there are certain things in my life I will I will never suffer and struggle over I'm, I'm not I'm not that foolish I am not that foolish you see it's a painful thing when you are suffering certain things that is available by covenant to the tribe you belong to break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain Elijah was a man who had a covenant with God that represented the system of the prophetic and the apostolic. He had other sons called the sons of the prophet. Is that true? But he had a strange man who was a farmer called Elisha. Elisha was not a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. He casted his mantle upon him and Elisha started following him. Join other prophets. Listen. And then the Bible says a time came when Elijah, Elijah it was about to go to heaven. Is that a normal human being is that how you go to heaven but that's how he went to heaven that's how you know that it's not a normal human being he knew where the gate of heaven was beyond the Jordan he said I'm about to leave he knew where to wait for the chariots <sighs> a man was taking fresh air on a mountain and they came to harass him he used one of the elements of the supernatural caught fire he said, I will not just use my mouth. If I be a man of God, let fire come from heaven. He prayed once and fire came. Is that how you pray when you stand? Look at what... He, he, hi. Koinonia, hear what I'm teaching you. Listen. When they were about to judge the prophets of Baal, there are some dimensions of witchcraft that is your covenant of connection that dislodges them. Not just your personal prayer and fasting. When the prophets of Baal were there, they were prophets under the custody of Jezebel. And look at the mockery. Elijah said, laugh. He said, he said, cut yourself, shout. Maybe your God is sleeping. If I am Elijah, I will be fasting. <laughs> Deliver me, O oh God. Wipe my tears. For the sake of your glory. I will be writing out the worship songs. Looking for somebody to play a cymbal. But here was a man crossing his leg. And mocking at them. From morning till evening he laughed. Because he knew they were wasting their time. After everything. They caught themselves. So that their God will see blood. And remember their covenant with him when they tried singing and praising and it did not work they danced around the prophets of Baal they started bringing blood what is blood the covenant Baal remember our covenant as prophets with you and Elijah shut the heavens and said keep calling on him then when it was time for Elijah I thought Elijah would have just said all right God fire come down he would have been surprised he said give me 12 stones 12 stones listen listen let me teach you something the bible says in the new jerusalem it said the gates of the city there were 12 gates and the gates had a name of the 12 tribes of israel every one of those tribes represented a dimension of god and 12 foundations having the name of the apostles he said give me 12 stones and the prophets of Baal were watching after it he put a sacrifice and then he said pour water the water was a mystery he was not just trying to say so that you don't think i hit fire because there are three forces that open the gates in this earth realm the spirit the water and the blood so he said pour water afterwards he lifted his eyes to the heaven the pattern was correct follow me and he said oh god and the fire the bible said the fire came licked the sacrifice and swept everything right and then hear what he said 
The moment that happened, he said, pursue all the prophets of Baal. Don't let one escape and kill them. Hear me, people of God. There are dimensions, there are kinds of mountains that were never designed to be approached alone. We fool ourselves thinking because we know God, every mountain will just go like that. He said, all things are possible, but they are, they are possible based on the knowledge available to you. If you can see me as I'm going, you will have something. The moment he left and he held the mantle, he would have gone to the well and say, I am a man of God. Pat, he would have been surprised. He said, where is the Lord God? As far as God was concerned, he did not see Elisha. He saw the covenant. Did the water obey? Absolutely. Do you know why Joshua was successful? God transferred a mystery to him. As I was with Moses, as I was, the way I related with him, so I will relate with you. He said, and because of that, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. So when the angel appeared, Joshua removed his knife and he was going to kill the angel. The angel had to explain he would have died. The word of God would have killed the angel, not the sword of Joshua. He said, are you for us or against us? And the angel said, hold on, neither. He had to explain because a man was running with the word of God. The Bible says, for instance, it says where two or three are gathered, where? In my name. The meaning is as touching my authority. There is a dimension of God that only shows up under corporate fellowship. You will never have that dimension alone in your room. Fast for 100 days, you will not see those things. That was why the psalmist was crying. He said, early will I seek you. He said, to see your power and your glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. There's something I've seen that only happens when believers gather. I've not seen it. Can you make it happen in my life? Hallelujah. He says, if two of you shall agree, hold my hands, Jimmy, as touching anything, there are certain levels of prayer that is not just about, I am alone, the veil has been torn, I, I'm, I'm alone, I can access Christ. It's a system. There are certain levels of difficulty that when two or three agree, you can just say one prayer. That was why the apostles, when they were threatening them, did they pray individually? Acts chapter 4. Remember they came together because they understood this. It took that kind of grace to bring the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. They could not pray alone and have the Holy Spirit come. So when the Bible says, Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it said they were all gathered in one accord. That formation gave the Holy Spirit room to come. In Acts chapter 4 when they threatened them, they came together and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. He says, stretch forth your right hand now to heal and that signs and wonders be wrought through your holy child and the building shook. There is a difference between your personal prayer life and the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a mystery of possibilities. When you understand the mysteries that govern the body of Christ, you will do things that you will never imagine you would have done. Are we together? I remember when a few people wrote jam here. You were, you were testaments of the things. Marks being added. I'm not talking of those 40, 40 marks. You see people, someone will check his jam, 197. Go and check again, 231. How did that happen? Look, let me tell you something. When you see a man of God, study the systems around his life. Don't just say this person is anointed. Ah, he has power. What makes the heaven owe him? It's like, it's like God, God owes certain men of God a debt he must pay. Even if they call his name joking, he has to show up. There is something that makes that happen. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. Our covenant 
is calling you. Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, sing it one more time. My altar is calling you. Oh God, my altar. Is calling you. Oh God. Is calling you. Oh God. God. Take my praise. Oh God. Oh God. Take my praise. Listen. Let me tell you something powerful. Numbers 24. Let me do my teaching now. Mike. Numbers 24. Let me share something with you that will break some gates open. I want your spirit to be sensitive. Something will happen in this place today. Numbers 24. Mm. Mambro setarakota shalabrati kaparata. Balaam was called by Balak to curse the nation of Israel. I've shared it here. The Lord asked me to repeat it, so I'm repeating it. Now listen. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, it's actually 23, 24. I'm jumping for time's sake. Follow the story. He went not as in other times to seek for enchantment. Now, there's a lot to say about Balaam. The Bible talks about the doctrine of Balaam, the error of Balaam, the way of Balaam. There is a long story on that. I don't want to go into that. But he set his face towards the wilderness. Let's rush it. Go ahead. And Balaam lifted his eyes. Balaam wanted to find out where... Listen, listen. Let me explain the whole scene for you. A prophet is brought by Balak and he said, Cause koinonia make things to start going wrong for people are we together now balaam tells them look oh, i am a prophet in other words i don't speak the way i want so as we stand here whatever you hear me say is what god is saying agreed they said agreed so they brought gifts balaam would have sought god by lifting his face to the hills that's the key sammy said i will lift up my eyes to the hills they know where their help comes from. But now Balaam used enchantment so that God would not be able to prophesy through him. Are you getting the story? He used divination to invoke spirits so that they would prophesy. So Balaam stood and after he used those enchantments, he was about to curse and his mouth produced blessings. And he was surprised. He moved to another place again and used invocations about to speak and he blessed them. He went to another place about to speak and he blessed them. And Balaam said, ah. Balak was angry. And he said, what is all this? I brought you to curse them. All that has been coming out of your mouth is blessings. Please watch this. And Balaam lifted his eyes to check. They were on a mountain. And he said, no, I'm a prophet. Let me look. What is the reason why no curse is working? And this is what he saw. Hallelujah. And he saw Israel abiding in what his tent there was a spiritual formation from the valley israel were wise people they didn't just say let's rest they said ah, it is possible that the kings will come and destroy us so let us engage the formation there is a pattern oh. they arranged themselves according to their tribes with the ark of god being at the center and they said, let's see who will curse us. They kept the card there. So when Balaam stood at the mountain to curse, the ark fought him back. And he said, I don't know what is wrong. I can't curse them. I can't curse them. Then listen to what he said. According to their stripes. And finally the spirit of God came upon him. This is what he said. The secret. And he took a parable. That's how prophets. Remember Hosea chapter 12. I have spoken in similitudes or parables. I have multiplied visions. He took a parable and he said, Balaam, the son of Beor, had said, speaking about himself, and the man whose eyes are opened, talking about himself, 
had said, verse 4, and he had said, which heard the words of God, which saw the visions of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Verse 5, how goodly are thy pens, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. That's the secret. I look at your tent and your spiritual formation and I see you arranged in a way that no cause, no enchantment. That's why he said no divination, no enchantment against Jacob. It's not just because they are Christians. Please listen to what I'm teaching you now. There was a spiritual pattern and literally Balaam as a true prophet could not cause them. They didn't fight. They just could not cause them. When it was time in 2nd Se Chronicles 20 verse 20 or well, we read from verse 15 downwards if there's time. They were about to fight. Three kings came together to fight them and the Bible said they had another formation. Kai. These guys used formations for victory, not stories. They inquired of the Lord what pattern will produce the result and they said let the worshippers be in front and when the worshippers were in front together with the ark the warriors were behind he said this is not an issue of sword and they began to sing hearken all judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem and thou king jehoshaphat thus saith the lord be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but the lord's let's read down quickly tomorrow go up against them and so on and so forth 17 listen he said ye shall not what set yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the lord O judah and jerusalem fear not or be dismayed tomorrow you go up against them verse and joseph had bowed his head this and that and that verse 19 there's something i'm looking for now listen and the levites and the children of the Kohathites and of the children of all of those people stood up to what praise the lord of the lord god of israel with a loud voice on high right and then of course they rose early in the morning and then when they began to praise you know a prophecy came next verse it says and when he had consulted the people he appointed what look at the formation who did he appoint do you use musicians to fight war musicians to fight war three kings about to kill you i hope you know they were not acting it was real death but there was a pattern it says and they should praise the beauty of his holiness and as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endured forever what happened and when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushment against the children of ammon moab and mount seir which were come against judah and were smitten next verse for the children of this stood up to slay themselves read the last sentence if you're a christian want to read everyone help to destroy military people killing themselves there were two left and he said who dies first say you he now killed the other person and killed himself while they were doing that other people were there invoking a pattern listen there's something I teach the school of ministry students called the reflection principle. Listen, I want to teach you something very powerful. It's a principle that is used in occultism. It's a principle that is used. It was an, an aberration of God's principle. Listen. You only host a spirit and a dimension of the possibility of a spirit if you create the atmosphere for that spirit to feel at home as though it were in its primary place of habitation are you getting what i'm saying so if the ambassador of u.s comes to the u.s consulate office in abuja it was designed to accommodate him his appetites the colors the architecture are we together there is a pattern based on the ideology of the united states they built the embassy that way so whether he is in nigeria or he's in america it does not make any difference to him because the embassy in nigeria reflects 
the dexterity and the glory of America. Are we together? Now watch this. If I want a spirit, any spirit, please give me this, sir. Sorry. No. If I want a spirit, assuming I'm a herbalist, I am not a herbalist. Assuming I'm a herbalist, are we together? And I want a spirit to come upon this. I'm not just going to say spirit come. Spirit break out. And then you think it will come. No. There is, I must find out what that spirit is. And the nature of its operation. And the kind of atmosphere that makes it come. And I will make this water become like the atmosphere. The spirit must come atmospheres and magnets they draw spirits and they draw possibilities to the earth and to territories please listen to this this is very important so this is what the psalmist said the holy ghost wanting to come into the new creation he said a body has thou prepared you prepared it in such a way that when i come into that body it will be as though i am in heaven when the body was prepared, the spirit could come. And that body today is called the Ecclesia, the body of Christ. It was built in a particular way. Christ, the foundation, the apostolic, and the prophetic. And then the, it rises and he said, that body you have prepared for me. So God is able to function on earth because of the body that has been prepared for him. Are we together now? when during our traditional festivals when they want to see certain spirits what do the masquerades do or the priests? they wear a particular attire having a particular kind of animal skin alligator skin then some use snakes some use hyenas come on talk to me africa are we together so we have don't don't act as if you came from 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 the middle east we're here we're home amen they use fire they provoke the spirit they start chanting tongues and start moving in a particular direction they can move here small and come back again they can run and come back while they are doing that someone can be playing drums are we together and then at a particular point the snake will start coming out when the snake starts coming out they start dancing and putting fire because the snake is reflecting what is happening in the realm of the spirit so the gods are now coming the moment that happens what happens it's like people are under the anointing even the priests they are under their anointing they start doing crazy things they took fire in their mouth and nothing happens because a spirit landed let me tell you why it landed there was a pattern i counseled one man um on on tuesday on wednesday in abuja before i came He's one of the popular Nigerian directors, directors of Nigerian film, you know, and all of that. And he told me something. He said, man of God, most of the Nigerian films you see us acting, the snake we use, they are real snakes. But what they do is they go to charmers. You know, these guys are charm snakes. So they give them a particular ring so that they can pick the snake and nothing will happen. The ring has a pattern. It's a language the snake understands. That's why sometimes it backfires. Because those powers expire, they must be renewed. If at the point of expiration, you are the one holding the snake, the snake that you were, you were in nice romance with would turn and enjoy you immediately. Are we together? Patterns. So there are men whose lives are patterns. You curse them, it returns back to you. And you are wondering see it is on this basis that you can say i am uncursable now the problem with the church is we say revelations without we we make statements without the spiritual revelation that activates those possibilities i am uncursable in the name of jesus and you find out there's a cause at work in your life clearly everybody knows you are cursed yeah i'm not cursed you are cursed we are seeing it it is on the strength of this there is a pattern don't laugh are we together so someone can vow like they vowed to paul and they said paul we will not eat nor drink until you are until you die 
and Paul lived many years afterwards. I'm teaching you something you can do on earth that is, is like a spiritual formation that will make the Holy Spirit respond to you in a certain way and you will see doors open and you'll be wondering what happened. It's a pattern. Balaam stood on the mountain and he saw the pattern and he said, I can't curse them. I'm trying. I'm making efforts. Listen, I can't tell you how many times on my way to travel, people will call me and say, Apostle, I just had a dream. Are you about to travel? I say, yes. They say, please, sir, don't travel. I love you so much. Koinonia loves you. I just had a dream this morning. And in that dream, I saw a plot. And I saw that you had a ghastly motor accident. And you died. And then I said, okay, I appreciate. Now, they are not, they are not lying. They saw it. And what they saw was correct. But there is a pattern. Kabarato Satayaba. David, I'm come and sing a song in my spirit. Your influence is all over me, right? I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. And your influence is all over me. Let's say. sit down listen brothers and sisters when it comes to kingdom advancement don't just think of your personal spiritual life alone there are limitations to your personal spiritual life as far as kingdom advance is concerned there are certain strategies of witchcraft that it takes more than you as a person to conquer it's not that Christ is not king of kings and lord of lords please hear me is a law there are formations there are things that have been engaged that requires the strength of the body not your strength alone if you do not understand this you will have a lot of casualties and you will mock yourself spiritual patterns formations that make men forbidable on earth they wanted to curse you just like somebody from your village now wants to curse you and you have been saying in the name of Jesus I'm uncursable I agree with you potentially but you have to engage the mystery that makes your word valid otherwise you will be shouting I will not be cursed until they, they, they kill you like a chicken are we together please listen listen There are three of these spiritual patterns that I want you to learn tonight. I don't know if we can touch all three, but we'll stop somewhere and pray. The first of that pattern 
Listen. Is the power of altars. An altar is a pattern. I'm not talking altar like coven. No. An altar is a token that represents a point where covenants are enacted. Every time a covenant is enacted, an altar is raised on earth as a memorial. You see that all through in scripture. Every time people had covenants with God or with themselves, they raised what? Altars. An altar is nothing diabolic at all. An altar is just a token. It's a representation. It doesn't even have to be physical. A representation. Please listen. A representation. A platform that affords covenant to not only be renewed, not only be remembered, but to be activated. Three things happen on altars. Renewal right continuity or servicing if you want to call it and then the third is activation spiritual realities are activated upon altars listen please listen every man of God every true ministry called of God has an altar they may not call it altar they may call it all kinds of things some call it covenant some call it altar i don't care what they call it but this is what it is it is a token that represents a covenant between god and that man and serves as a memorial the altar that was raised in the day of of um noah when he raised that altar there was a sign of a rainbow is that true and god gave this as a token when circumcision itself is a token i hope you know when you circumcise a child it's a revelation that was given to abraham circumcise them joshua circumcise them the power and the revelation of the patterns that altars create are things we should never take for granted especially in such a wicked world koinonia has an altar you hear us sing that song my it's nothing diabolic i don't mean babala or something no, that's not what i'm talking about as a person there are covenants that i've had through my encounters with god that have become the platforms upon which certain possibilities ride the same way I have gleaned upon the covenant of others with God. And it has become an advantage. It has boosted my personal spiritual life. It has boosted the possibilities that I can see in my own life. Please hear me and I want you to be sensitive. We're about to pray. Be very sensitive right now. When Abel died, when Cain killed Abel, what cried? Please answer me, what cried? And he said, the blood of Abel cries. And the blood is speaking. Abel is dead. The blood is saying revenge. You have to bring vengeance upon Cain. And Jesus now says that even his blood too speaks. The only difference is that his blood speaks better things which were predicated on a better covenant. Are we together? There are altars that speak over the lives and the destinies of men. Please listen, listen, listen. I want to give you spiritual intelligence. You don't bind an altar. It was enacted by covenant. It's called the law of displacement. There are two lights. They keep shining until a greater light comes. Then it overshadows them. Are we together? These are spiritual laws. So many people do not know the foundation upon which their predicaments are coming. They think it's just an issue of personal retreat for three days. Have you seen people who are praying and fasting on the last day of the fast? 
what they were praying against is what happens maybe somebody sleeps with you in a dream and you charge and get angry and you go and say look three days i'm praying on the third day drive fast you are looking like a skeleton you are about to break you just decided to take a nap for the last 30 minutes and here the person comes as if your prayer made nonsense in the prayer you are shouting, jesus jesus and the person is just looking at you and say keep shouting your jesus there and comes to do exactly what he said to do you know why i know this thing so well because it happened in my life have you've heard my story wicked spirits will come and oppress me and come into my room my own was not even an experience I see them they see me but I couldn't do anything about it some of you say I shouted Jesus the pastor said, shouted well you shouted it well nothing happened please don't laugh I'm giving you a mystery because we're about to pray are we together we have lost the advantage of the patterns that God gave the body it's not about an individual's personal success there are times when the secret to your breakthrough is based on alignment to covenants that God has had and he will respond to you and have respect for the covenant are we together there are people who have a covenant with God that every time they show up in a city there must be breakthroughs so they show up in a city to have a crusade and when they show up to have a crusade people who have no business with that crusade receive breakthroughs that have nothing to do with that ministry because for as long as that individual is there that territory has an advantage of tapping into the covenant that he has are you getting what i'm saying there are people who personally their prayer life is dead but when they get to the prayer department on Tuesday to pray, you find out that you who was struggling to pray for five minutes, you now stretch for two hours. It's because something picked you. That's why you can go back home and say, ah. So it is God's system to help you so that even when your spiritual life is down, Satan will still not be able to reach you. Before you come back to life, there is a system that covers you. Altars that we can take advantage of there are men who when they come into a city you know everything shakes it's not by the loudness of the publicity but they come in with the presence they carry they come in with the covenants that they carry and you find out that there are strange results strange testimonies that happen to people and then they leave we'll find somewhere and stop I want to pray my life has changed like day and night because of this truth that I have discovered. I found it as a key because there were certain limitations in my life, though anointed, though a great man of God, though having encounters with Jesus. At a point in my life, there were certain mountains that would not move. There were certain doors that would not open regardless of what i did and i said lord but your word says if i have faith like a monster seed i know that i have faith and then god began to teach me for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep because they cannot discern the body their inability to discern the body that has been prepared to host the spirit everything is possible but you need to know how to make it possible you need to know how to make it possible this night looking at me and hearing me by the thousands are men and women who have done certain things alone you have struggled spiritually you love God you have held on to some of these principles but the truth is that door has refused to open you have done what you know to do I show you the third key you must engage it's called the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants 
God has entered covenants with individuals. He has entered covenants with systems. Please, I can beg you. Some of you are looking for admission. Listen to what I'm telling you and get into school. Otherwise, sit down there roaming around that you have 230 and repeat the same nonsense that has been going on. Some things in life will not move just by your personal faith. Do you know that when Jesus was on earth, he was not the only miracle worker? Please answer me. Is that true? There was a time his disciples saw other people who were not in Jesus' camp, but they were still performing miracles. Not by Baal. Not Beelzebub. And they said, ah, Jesus, this is, this is strange. Ah, I thought you were the savior. And he said, I, paraphrasing, I came to introduce something new. But until the new comes, the old is still valid. There was a way miracles were done in the old covenant. There were people who believed it. There was a priesthood that made it possible. For instance, an angel would come and steer the water. Was Jesus around when it happened? No, but it happened. A particular prophet in the Bible, when a woman was sick or someone was sick, he made herbs, leaves, and put it on the legs of the person. Are we together? If you understand what I'm teaching you, then you will know that when you stand and the mountains look like they are not, you have done all you know to do. Listen, stop trying harder. The key is not harder. The key is step back and look at the body of Christ. Don't look at yourself again. Look at the body of Christ. What spiritual tribe is connected to the possibility that will open the door I'm looking for. You can be a man of God full of grace and prayer, but you know that there is no prosperity in your ministry. And you are saying, Lord, we have prayed, we have fasted. This prosperity thing is not working. Step back and look at the body of Christ. A body has thou prepared for me. Sometimes God can give you just one instruction. Go to any living faith branch. Hold what you have as a seed and go and sow it in that. You don't even have to be prayed for. The moment you pray for it, you go back and God says, fine. What you have done is called alignment to a covenant. And God begins to relate with you the same way he relates with God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. And you will find out mysteriously, mysteriously. Something happened recently. Somebody called me and they had a court case recently. And Ejimi, this court case, humanly speaking, was already against the person. There is no human way on earth he would have won that case. And when he called me, I said, tell me the truth. When he told me everything, ah, I said, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Because I, I, I know a bit about legalities. And I know that based on that thing, if it's to spend time in the prison, it will be nothing less than 10 years away from his wife and his children. But I told him, I said, well, I don't know what to tell you, but if you can believe what I want to tell you, there can be a way out. I told him, I said, I can pray for you. God has given me grace for territories and I want to pray for you. I prayed for that guy do you know I got to find out he didn't even show up on the day of because of fear he didn't show up in the court he refused to show up and later he would tell me that the judge looked and looked at everything and threw away the case from the court now please brothers and sisters please you went to school you are intelligent in Nigeria who does that <sighs> you reign you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on the earth. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. The Bible says Christ is the head of all principalities. He recognizes their existence. So he says your only advantage is that I am the head. Not that you say they are not there. No. 
It's your Bible. I'm teaching you spiritual intelligence. But many people say, assume they are not there. Are you kidding? When they refuse Jesus from entering back, they say, who is this king of glory? He had to explain himself. Christ is the head of principalities. He said he has been made above thrones. So he recognizes them above dominions and every name that is named not only in this earth but in the world to come what do you not know that is responsible for the devil sinking through your life and making it look like god is not alive please hear what i'm saying a job will not just come because you think you're a nigerian there are mysteries you have done there are many arrogant pastors in ministry who are suffering this they've done everything to do but the key is an alignment an alignment that opens up spiritual possibilities an alignment those who were mina i'm sure maybe my friend pastor Peter is listening Pete rock you know i love house on the rock and all of that when we went to Mina, Aaron, you were there. The same thing you see in Koinonia. Crowds here, overflow on top and then outside. It's alignment. Brothers and sisters, you may be a musician, but you can align to a system that will give you more than songs. You will find out that things are opening. You are a student, but you align to somebody who is paying you salary. And they say, no, you must be sleeping with the man. You say, no, I, I, I just belong to a tribe that has a covenant with God that is respected even by hell. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, what is not at work in your life is still available. It takes humility and alignment. Many people will insult me for what I'm teaching you now because they will think I'm teaching you human worship. God is my witness. I, I, I don't have time for all of those things, but you have to be careful who you listen to. Don't let men do well-meaning to deceive you. There are systems on earth that represent spiritual possibilities. You may argue it and never see certain things happen in your life. Please hear me. Look beyond your personal strength and look at the privileges that God has put in the body. A body has thou prepared for me. A body has thou prepared. This koinonia that you look at every time. Maybe one day I will take out time and share the whole journey. So that you will know that this is not just an ambition of a man to have a ministry. If I want fame, there are easier ways. I'm not dull. I can write books. Are we together? Access to the riches and the blessings of heaven. There are covenants you align with that will open you up to possibilities. I don't want to begin to give you testimonies upon testimonies. Hallelujah. We're already preparing to buy our land. I will not tell you where it is until we buy it. Some of you will be surprised. You will open your mouth and say it's a lie. You can't get land like that. A property that will swallow CGC how many times in this area? Because when you catch the keys, listen, listen. Listen, I don't say this to brag. I'm challenging you. It's, it's not by trying. No door opens to shouting. It opens to keys. God is giving you something now. You have been writing jam. You are brilliant, but it's not working. Don't stay foolishly and say, I, I, I know this time around, I, I got 250. No. Are we together? Possibilities. There are men and women who God has put in the body of Christ in territories that's why Satan creates a lot of controversy around their life to fight them so that what you are supposed to receive will not be given to you but as we pray the devil is a liar somebody's door is about to be opened rise up on your feet everybody and let's pray we are going to pray three prayer points and I want you to pray it with every, every ounce of strength. No carelessness, no looking around. You're going to cry to God. Prayer point number one. Lord, I acknowledge that I am limited as a person. No matter how spiritual I am. As a pastor, 
as an apostle, as a prophet, as a teacher, as an individual, I am limited. And I come before you with every sense of humility, acknowledging my limitation. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I acknowledge. Lord, I acknowledge. I acknowledge that you have built a system. You have built a system beyond the personal spiritual progress of a man. You have designed this mystery called the body of Christ. This strategy called the body of Christ to lift men, to bail them out of captivity. You have designed this mystery called the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Look up, please. Prayer point number two. I want you to be sincere before God. Mention all the things you know you have tried and done all you know to do but has not changed. Mention it before God because we are about to engage a mystery. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I prayed over this failure in my family. Nothing has seemed to change. Outside, make sure you're praying. Those online, make sure you're praying.
Listen. As holy as man tried to be, there were some things he could not do for himself. So Jesus had to come. And man's salvation now is tied to his alignment to the finished work of Christ. It's a pattern. There are times your victory will be based on the finished work of others. Not just of Christ, but they have cried the cry for you so you don't cry again. They have taken the scars for you so you don't take it again. But if you do not know, Satan will cheat you. There are times you will stand before that Red Sea. Please hear me, just the same bar, please. You stand before the Red Sea and the Red Sea will refuse to part. You will, you will invoke your personal altar. It will not open. Let me tell you, there are stubborn challenges like that in the life of a man. You will agree with your wife, your husband. It will not move. When all else fail, switch. Switch. Remember what tribe you belong to. Remember the spiritual possibilities that come. And say, oh God of salvation. Remember, 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 remember. 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 And all of a sudden, your God will arise. Not for your sake. Listen, hear me. I don't know if it's a tight booklet of redeemed or living faith. I can't remember which of them. But there was a woman who had been a faithful titan. I don't know if it's redeemed or living faith. One of the ministries, she testified. And robbers came to her house and assassins to kill her and kill her husband. They stepped into the house. They were with guns. The man was there. His wife was there. All that there was was to shoot. And there was nothing to do. The man just, he knew he was gone. All else failed. And all the woman did was to bring out her tight booklet and dropped it on the ground. Remember the covenant. Is it not your house that was built with my money? Is it not souls that are saved with my money? Don't waste your time trying to say one day God will come. No, that one day you can create it. The day the pattern is there. As powerful as Jesus was, his heavens were closed until he had to encounter a man. The heavens of Jesus did not open because he was called Jesus. It was open based on the covenant that came down to John the Baptist. And so when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, behold the lamb. And he said, that's not the issue. My heavens are closed. And he said, suffer it to be so. I can't neglect the pattern. And when John dipped Jesus and brought him out, there was a transference and God responded. The heavens opened and he said, this is my beloved son. Please hear me. It's not as hard as your life makes it look. You just don't know what to do. We are going to cry and say, Lord, show me what I must do to come out of this challenge in my presence. Lift your voice and pray. There is always something to do. Koinonia cry. Show me, oh God, what is the secret, the missing link to my healing ministry, the missing link to bring prosperity to my life. Hey. Who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel? There is a mystery, there is a pattern, there is a mystery, there is a pattern. Let hope Darkness when losing your own light. 
Hallelujah. Listen. We are going to pray. Please look up everybody. We are going to pray. Just one more prayer and I will pray for us. I'd like you to pray. This ground, not I don't mean physical ground, but this mystery called koinonia is, is enshrined in strange covenants that are responsible for possibilities. Now please pay attention. We're about to pray strategic prayer. Are we together? I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I invoke the covenant that is upon this ministry. The possibilities that your appearance, the sacrifices are brought. I invoke it upon my life. Pray. The covenant of open doors, the covenant of his Shakina glory, access to kings, access to strange favor. Pastors, pray. Let it come upon my ministry, oh God. Pray. Let it come upon my life. Lord, I've written this jam by my strength. I've tried and tried, but I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to make money by my strength. I've fasted. I've sown seed. I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to get a job. I've tried to get a job. It's not working. I cry to the God of heaven. Let hope, let hope, let it rise tonight. Let it rise tonight. The covenant of long life. The covenant of honor, strange honor, access to kings, access to nobles, access to royalties, access to power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you pray this next prayer, listen, there will be strange impartations and strange testimonies on people. This, these are testimonies coming from heaven. Are we together? I want you to pray it with all your heart. All your heart, all your heart. Listen, listen. See, that you are part of this great house is no guarantee that you will enjoy the blessings that come. It must be intentional. Proximity is not connection. Are we together? Proximity is not connection. I have tapped into the covenant that God has had with people who have gone higher than me and they have opened me to strange doors realms that I know are not realms that are as a result of my personal prayer life 
I'm a product of many anointings, many graces, many spiritual possibilities. Please hear what I'm telling you. I'm stepping into a strange, I show you a deep mystery. Many of you will not appreciate it until you struggle and life whips nonsense out of you. You will come back to this message and it will make sense to you. There are many ministries that are anointed, but they may never grow. They have done all they need to do. They have prayed. There are groups. There are all kinds of sincere people around. You've done all you know to do. Listen, you were not designed to do everything as regards your growth by yourself. That's why God put the body. Did a body has thou prepared. A body has thou prepared. Are we together? There are mysteries. When a Jimmy shared with me the supernatural birth of his wife, I couldn't believe it. In minutes, she had given birth. Case closed. Because there are mysteries you engage. Are we together? Please hear what I'm saying. You see Hope standing. You see Aaron's wife standing. Almost as if they didn't give birth. Right? There is a mystery. What you don't know does not mean it cannot work. You just don't know how to make it work. Are we together? We are going to pray. One last prayer with all your heart. Every area you know must work in your life. Listen, listen, listen. It pleases the Lord when you have testimonies. It pleases the Lord there are some of us, certain sicknesses are killing us. No you've taken drugs, you've done everything without your imagination. There are, there, are, there are graces that we have seen. Sometimes, all it takes is recognition to say, Lord, I tap into this grace. I shared with you my story when I went to sow a seed to God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko. And when I came out, the Lord asked me, kneel down on the ground, bare ground that ground I laid my hands upon it it's not about idolizing altars and all of that no and he said lay your hands on the ground I laid my hands on the bare ground and the Lord said from this day you have entered the overflow anointing are we together it was an old woman who prophesied upon my life and said my son forever you will walk upon gold that's what that mama told me till tomorrow to whether she's a human being or an angel I don't know I bought sugarcane of 50 naira. Sugarcane of 50 naira changed my destiny forever. Are we together? You join them, you will die like them. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are many arrogant people in our society who believe they know what they are doing. Even when they are quarter to destruction, they will still be bragging. If you are not seeing results for a long time in your life, please calm down and find out what is it. Thank God for the area you are seeing results. But what of the areas where there are no results? We are going to pray. And you are going to cry to the God of your salvation in one minute. And say, Lord, the unction, the grace, the unction that must land upon my life now for those doors to open. If it did not come through my personal prayer life, then I take advantage of this spiritual formation that is in this house. I take advantage of this spiritual formation. Are we praying? Go ahead and pray. I'm about to pray for you, but pray. The anointing, Paparato Shata that must come upon my life must come upon my ministry must come upon my prayer group the grace let it come oh god let it come let it come oh god let it come let it come oh god let it come shakata prakata barada bala kosoto praskata em prakata katata tapo kosoto prakata barada bosh makata pakarata kasekete Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everyone. I want to pray for you.
Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. Lift your hands, Father. I'm about to pray for you. Something will come upon your life right now, and I want you to believe it in the name that is above all names, Father. It is by your wisdom and by your orchestration you designed the body, no one designed it and gave it a blueprint. You designed the blueprint of the tabernacle in heaven and you gave Moses and said, reproduce it on earth. And the moment they built according to pattern, your glory came. Lord, there is a spiritual formation in this house that makes for your presence, that makes for influence, that makes for honor, that makes for effective prayer lives. And Lord, I pray that that grace in no small way, by covenant, I cry upon you the God of my salvation that tonight oh god you remember your covenant with this house and that you change the lives of people therefore right now i pray i stretch my hands at the count of three i pray that this grace will come upon people right now father remember the covenant one in the name of jesus one two three take it now take it now take it now Take it now. Take it now. Wherever you are, I challenge those mountains. Take the anointing. Challenge the business mountain. Take the anointing. Challenge death. Challenge it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Take it now. Please help them. Inside and outside, I release that grace. The grace that is an incense from the covenant upon this house. Every spirit that has refused to leave your destiny to move forward right now in the name of Jesus. The same way Balaam could not cause Israel. I command that spirit. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the voice of the altar. Be gone now. Be gone now. Be gone now. Be gone now. Shake it. Be gone now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see things leaving the stomach of ladies. Many ladies. This is what I'm saying. Something that looks, I don't know what it looks like, honestly. But I'm seeing it leaving people in strange ways. Lord, let it go. Let it go. Whatever it represents. Now, now, now. Let it go. Every sickness. Let it go. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Heaven come down. We have come We have come Oh let Daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 22. Mandi blakoshi prahata kosi baladaba. The story of a cruel king who slept and had a dream, forgot the dream and forgot the interpretation, and was mounting pressure upon all his wise men and cabinets. And Daniel said, Give us time. And the Bible says he asked for wisdom. And in the night, can we read together verse 19? One to read. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Verse 20. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. 21. 
he, he changed the times and seasons he removed kings and set up kings he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth he said then was the secret revealed <laughs> brothers and sisters secrets can be revealed not everything is known by every christian are you hearing me the bible says the secret things of the lord are not just with christians they are with them that fear him and he will reveal his covenants he will show them his covenants there are mysteries in our world there are secrets that have been archived in the bowels of the spirit and it takes men who can press to say lord open my eyes show me the secrets that's why all things are not possible for everybody is that true kentucky fried chicken one of the great eateries around um, they have a secret recipe that till today has not been revealed is that true that secret recipe is what makes them unique coca-cola till today they have not revealed the exact formula and combination great men dwell upon the strength of secrets in ancient time it was a taboo to reveal the deepest of secrets they were known only by the king and his envoys those we call knights or apostles they were the highest representatives of the king they knew where treasures were hidden in castles they knew secret places of escape in chambers when when they came to defeat a nation they knew how to to invoke the powers of those territories to fight on their behalf it was an access that was given to them and so as his ambassadors god wants to show us he doesn't want to hide anything from us he said come let us reason together i want to show you how i operate the heavens so that you can draw from this and do wonders in the earth if you believe that say amen so spiritual laws are real the spirit realm is a real realm of existence just like the physical realm it is only a lot more superior to this realm this realm is bounded by many things there are limitations for instance this realm is purely three-dimensional but in the realm of the spirit there are many dimensions a lot of people have preached that there are four dimensions five i don't believe that i believe that there are infinite dimensions in the realm of the spirit because the possibilities in the spirit are defined by what dimension you can function hallelujah praise the lord and so i want us to know that the spirit realm is real the spirit realm is real and there is a constant interaction between the spirit realm and this realm every single one of us under the sound of my voice and those following us online every single one under the sound of my voice interacts with the spirit realm every time whether you recognize it or not the condition to to interact with the spirit realm is just to be alive remember i began the teaching last week showing us the five elements right the elements of creation we drink water is that true we breathe air why don't we breathe dust we breathe air to live air that seems to be immaterial but we breathe it in our material body to keep us alive so our biological composition is is a is a, a, a an intertwining of both this realm and the realm of the spirit prosperity is an intertwining of the spirit realm and this realm success in life is an intertwining of the realm of the spirit and this realm the anointing the ability and the agency of the spirit when a man stands and you look at somebody with cancer 
and stretch your physical hand you may not even make contact with the person and the person starts shaking or the person falls it tells you that there is something more than what your eyes is seeing there is an interaction is that true watch this i'm speaking to you there is no there is no digital connection between my mouth and your heart but what i am saying is passing through your ears and it has the ability to influence your paradigm because they are spirit and life hallelujah so we must we must rise to this reality that all we see in our world brothers and sisters is not all there is praise the lord all we see is not all there is there is more say there is more in this building right now inside and outside there are more angels than this crowd gathered here and many of them are doing many things as i teach right now some are imparting graces and all of these things right walking in partnership with the spirit and they are not only angels there are also the spirits of just men made perfect testifying like the witnesses that stood with jesus at the mount of transfiguration elijah and moses representing the law and the prophet they are not the only witnesses there are many others enoch for instance right many other people so the bible says ye are come on to mount zion and it begins to tell us all the things that happen in that place listen the earlier you realize that life is entirely spiritual that the physical manifestation is only a little portion hallelujah occultists understand this politicians understand this is that true I was i was studying the world religion i'll give you a few statistics as we progress very shocking i didn't know there was that much religion in the whole world i thought there were just maybe 100 or 1000 i will tell you the figure shortly <laughs> and all these religions have followers ardent committed die-hard followers meaning the spirit of man is searching for something searching for a connection with its source somehow mankind knows that until you interact with this the spirit realm there is no stability to your person there is a longing so we pray to a deity we call different names for many religions and we hope that somebody out there of a higher consciousness is listening to us there are spiritual laws the same way I can violate gravity and violate other laws and reap the consequences of my disobedience or ignorance. That is the same way I can stumble into a spiritual law I do not know and activate its operation unconsciously and suddenly begin to see certain things manifest physically. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then on the other hand, I can deactivate the operation of a spiritual law without knowing and begin to receive a ripple effect in the physical. Are you following me now? So it seems to me like the journey of many Christians is, is, is a blind dashing into spiritual laws. We are not exactly sure. Sometimes we touch something that activates prosperity. And ha has that happened to you? For weeks you find out that favor is coming. Everything is happening. And then it's like something happens. And it's short. There are times that you find out that everything you say in prayer comes to pass. And then other times you pray and it's as if you are talking to yourself. Hallelujah. There are times you suddenly step into a dimension and seasons and you are having dreams every night. And everything you see is coming to pass. And then certain times. What is responsible for this opening and closing of the gates of the spirit? This is what I want to teach you. The reality of spiritual things. Even for preachers, there are times you stand to preach and you sense an unusual open heavens. You are just ministering and my goodness scriptures that you you read years ago 
that you cannot even quote normally suddenly come to your mind and you are quoting them verbatim and other times it looks like you stand and you are wondering i hope i'm not messing up listen if you get what i'm teaching you you will keep certain portals of the spirit open perpetually hallelujah certain people have touched this realm in different forms hallelujah now watch this the fundamental principle i want us to understand as we explore this very sensitive teaching because what i'm going to be saying will rattle many of us hallelujah some of the things that i'm going to be saying will challenge us but i want you to follow me the fundamental principle i want you to have at the back of your mind is that everything created belongs to god you will see the advantage of this statement as we progress everything created belongs to god secondly all power belongs to god hallelujah all power psalm 62 verse 11 please quickly psalm 62 verse 11 it says once have i spoken and twice have you heard that all power everybody shout all power all power you went to school what is your understanding of all power meaning if there is any performance that ever occurs any manifestation of the supernatural in the earth to any degree was either a release or a corruption of power that came from god please follow me god has spoken once twice i have heard this that power belongs to god look up please when a magician takes a white handkerchief please follow me tonight and waves it and brings out a dove out of it what happened what happened hallelujah when a magician slices himself into half and holds the remaining half of him and is walking and bastardizes your knowledge of physics and biology what exactly is happening listen to me he said once have i spoken twice in other words i emphasize it as a witness that all power belongs to god that means the central force in the realm of the spirit is not astrology it's not the constellation the seat of power in the spirit is god himself just follow me every religion is the hybrid of a man's pursuit to uncover and look for this mystery entity that we call god and over time what has happened is listen fallen angels you know i spoke to you about the pre-adamite dispensation we spoke a bit about that right realities that predate genesis 1 you find that in job 38 right the creation we spoke a bit now last year this year the creation of angels and all of these things right now watch this let me show you a few mysteries in the bible have you read in your bible that stars fought for a woman called deborah question was she an unbeliever <laughs> have you had that thing that stars fought for deborah have you had people mention statements like you were born with 10 stars eh? whether you believe it or not just follow me i'm not teaching you scientology i'm provoking you to be mature just listen to me are you following me now many of us come from different cultural backgrounds where at one point or the other they have brought somebody to your house hello baba mama whatever they shall brought somebody to your house and he was able to do certain things whether he used cola not whether he used whatever and he began to unveil certain things either reveal the person that stole is that true stole money or meat or lied is that true and then he began to reveal some things how many of you have seen people who are not born again they have never given their life to christ yet they have functioned in what you know to be word of knowledge is that true in certain tribes they call them those whose head has opened is that true 
people who can see beyond certain things listen god has spoken once let it be known to you that when it comes to the realm of the spirit there are not many forces there is one force everything revolves around him his name is god almighty whether we accept to call him god almighty or not are you getting my point now hmm. so how come satan can manipulate power how come traditional rulers can manipulate power please follow me how come a man can look at this lady and say look um you will not give birth case closed he didn't ask her whether she had faith or not he just spoke on the strength of something he has been taught is that true how come people read magical books huh all kinds of books they tell them recite this and the moment they recite it things start happening brothers and sisters am i telling a lie or pastors have been afraid of confronting this issue because if we don't many of us will not know when we have entered witchcraft if all power belongs to god then whose power are witches using follow me if all power belongs to God, then the religions that can turn, there, there, there's the video of a young guy that walked upon water. Physically, he walked upon it. Huh? He walked upon a building sideways and came down. No pastor has done that, at least. I only know one bold pastor who decided he, he was Prophet Daniel, the one that lions tore him into pieces in the bad. That's the closest thing that I know. But the Bible says, once have I spoken, twice, that all. So, is it that God gave it to these demons? No, think about it. Go to Zaria city and meet somebody and say, I want a husband. What's that thing that they carry? Love portion, wealth portion, all kinds of, of things. They give you and one young man is just moving and they blow something towards him. He becomes absolutely confused right and starts pursuing a lady helplessly until she does whatever she wants to do with it now think about that if the bible is telling the truth that all power belongs to god i have a question by the way it will interest you to know that there are 4200 religions as of today in the world how many 4200 registered all the 4200 religions where did they get their power from satan does not create anything is that clear do we all agree question was god sleeping did they steal some of the power without his seeing? what is the mystery behind the seeming strengthening of wicked forces some of you have dreams and you see all kinds of spirits appear to you you are trying to call jesus they shut your mouth with all your knowing of jesus jesus and they stand and they laugh question who empowered them if satan was created are you prepared for this year of the rain we are going to talk we are, we are going as deep as god will help us go because we must answer some questions let me tell you when you answer these questions you will, you, you will start laughing at what used to make you cry because when you see it you know that uh -uh, this is the one plus one this is what made it happen and i told you that every time you catch a light what happens in the spirit grace is given to you to walk in that reality so you can see five people struggling over a demon go out go out and you will only pass no prayer light the spirits know what they are seeing you see that because the strength of evil is darkness the bible calls them rulers of darkness not rulers of light whenever there is darkness they are authorized to rule all religions of the world claim to connect people to wealth to joy to happiness to life to peace and to god or some kind of higher cosmic power for assistance 
That's the whole bit behind every world religion. Is that not true? If somebody comes to take you now and says, Mary Ann, I want you to be part of the Confucius religion. You think you will just come? Wouldn't I promise you something? I'll promise you wealth and happiness. I'll promise you that whatever you want, speak certain things and it will happen. Right? If Marianne speaks it and it happens, she will invite Shei and say, Shei, it's easier than that other thing you are doing. Shei will first say, I don't believe it. When life presses her to the world, she will adopt it. The strength of this religion is that the suffering of mankind is endless. And so eventually, people will search for solution anyhow. Are you getting me? By the way, many of these religions have their branches in Africa. You would think that our suffering or our, our backwardness in technology will make us say, what is all this? Find out how many Africans do. They are not Christians. They are not Muslims. They are not Hindus. Right? They are something else. And they have followers. There is an acclaimed personality in this nation I, I told you that I've repented from mentioning names acclaimed personality who I think for 48 years or thereabout I don't know if it was him or, or his brother or somebody who never came out never came out for about 48 years look even if you are sitting down for 48 years power somehow the devil must come upon you. He must land upon your life and interact with you. Sacrifices that men have made. Now the question is, brothers and sisters, if God is good and God is great and he does not eschew evil, what would be the explanation to the seeming empowerment Preachers have thought that the power you have, the power Satan has is your power or he collected it. How did he collect it? Collect it back. The question, how did he collect it? You know, we generalize things that we owe people. Demon is working with something that is solid and provable. Hallelujah. You prayed about something. The answer did not come. Your brother said, come, let's go and visit somebody. They visited the person in two days. The answer came. Is that true? It's true you gave thanksgiving in church, but we really know where that answer came from. Is that true? A woman cries to God, comes to we preachers, and we prophesy in the name of Jesus. I command that cancer to go. Nothing went. Is that true? They just respect us and they won't publish anything on the newspaper. And they quietly go and meet another person. And they invoke things and they have the baby and women of God come and claim the glory. It's better let's sit down and ask ourselves the truth. And answer these questions. Or keep telling lies. There are many people telling lies in church. Many of the miracles people claim to get in church. I am telling you, they got it outside the church. They consulted a lot of powers. There are families today who will never give their children in marriage until they go and ask certain people. And they confirm, is that true? Whether, whether you are a pastor, whatever you believe, keep your westernization. They will go and consult. Even if it means them buying goat, ram, sheep, human being, they will consult. Is that true? What then is this mystery? There are five religions, major religions, out of the 4,200. The first is Hinduism. The second is Buddhism. The third is Islam. The fourth is Christianity. And the fifth is New Age. There's no time and it's not within the scope of the teaching to tell you what this individual sect, if I will call them, believe. There are others who believe like the Hindus, for instance. Hindus believe there is one great God, but he expresses himself in many ways meaning there are many ways to approach him right so they can have many kinds of deities or envoys that help you communicate to this god and they believe in several doctrines of reincarnation buddhism many people think buddhism worship buddha no 
they just feel that buddha is the person who has been able to attain that highest level of consciousness as they call it and so they model after his life same with all the other religions new age is the recent teachings that was perpetrated by the kingdom of darkness under new age you are god it's a it's a little stealing away from the bible all these religions there's no time i would have proven to you that they all have their origin from the bible that's why they can prove to any christians that's why christians are the most vulnerable is that true they take bible and show you what supports their belief and you say wow this thing is in the bible meaning god must support it there comes that theory that all roads still lead to the same god have you heard those those devilish teachings and so people tell you don't worry when you go to the harbor list you say look don't be scared with all this color not i'm doing it's still the same thing it's just different ways of invoking the same god and then he invokes the color not and he says psalms 1 verse 3 i say ah psalms Abba. i know psalms go ahead right to now justify that because psalms 1 was mentioned god is in it is that true what deceit All power belongs to God. Now watch this. I want you to know this. The fallen angels, hallelujah, those we call the fallen angels, I've taught us, but I'll repeat it again just for the sake of establishing a few things. The fallen angels, when they came to the earth, please listen to me, they interacted with men and part of that interaction was responsible for supplying certain deep informations. Don't forget that they were all in heaven. Right? Certain laws are God's own laws and they are made to happen. How many of you go to the farm and pray and fast for crops to grow? Please tell the truth. After you sow, you go back and say, oh God. No. Once you sow it to the earth, you go back. A man can kill another man and steal his land and sow and still reap a bumper harvest because of the existence of physical laws. So it is. God has put spiritual laws. Are you getting my point? Now, for spiritual laws to work, please come, I'm establishing something. Come, Sam. For spiritual laws to work in the spirit, a spirit must assist you in activating its operation. Are you getting the rules? For any spiritual law at all to work, there must be a spirit entity that will assist you. It is in partnership with a spirit before any spiritual law can be activated. So if I am a magician and I'm doing a lot of abracadabra, for instance, there must have been a spirit that was invoked appeased or a demand is placed upon him is that true now let's explain our traditional festivals what happened what is the whole goal of many traditional festivals they first appease certain spirits either with people who must die or sacrifices and when those spirits are appeased the mediums that interface between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm let the people know that ah this goat the spirit has, has eaten it. Although you are seeing a physical goat. The priest ends up eating the flesh physically. Uh, uh, the honorarium. The, the, everything goes to the priest. But I'm saying that the whole goal is that the sacrifice has been received. Is that true? That's what happens. No man by his strength can activate spiritual laws. Are you getting my point? There must be the assistance of a spirit watch this i want to shock you now the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws just follow me the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws the spirits of dead men can activate spiritual laws ancestral spirits can activate spiritual laws demons and spiritual wickedness that operate in the heavenlies on the strength of the fact that they are spiritual entities they can guide men 
to activate spiritual laws watch this so there is a universal law in the spirit for anything to be of god and to carry to carry god's signature there is only one spirit that validates are you getting my point the holy spirit is the only spirit authorized the most holy spirit of god the only one authorized to activate any spiritual law such that god becomes involved and the glory goes to god are you getting my point that means watch this it is possible that i can use magic power and look at sam and do a miracle a real miracle it happens but it did not happen by the spirit of god but because it is a manipulation of a spiritual law it will happen accurately are you getting what i'm saying that means i can give a woman a child but not by the spirit of god is that true i can use the advantage of my partnership with another spirit and remove cancer from her stomach and put back another spirit that means i can receive word of knowledge from a spirit accurate word of knowledge but not from god are you are you getting what i'm saying when you understand this listen to me you will hold the holy spirit as a matter of life and death are you getting my point now the problem with many men of god is when they started their journey they started with the holy spirit but they allowed their passion to make them leave the holy spirit so when the holy ghost said wait i'm schooling you in this area they said i'm in a hurry i must enter prophecy i must enter this holy ghost you can go and another holy spirit another spirit really not holy another spirit continue the journey are you getting the point and because they seem to have been progressing in spiritual things that spirit of deception made them feel that is the continuation of the ministry of the holy spirit so although in them they feel something is wrong there is there is a mixing many men of god in this country around that we call fake are not fake even those who do magic most of what has happened is a perversion are you getting me they went under certain people certain hands were laid in them and certain demonic forces were invoked to begin to work with them and it activated certain possibilities and they started gaining knowledge on certain laws is god helping us or are you afraid of the teaching you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul i know you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul for you are being changed his glory is being revealed when the spirit takes over your soul listen when you hear us talk a lot about the holy spirit and emphasize him it is because there are other spirits already and if you do not embrace the spirit of god you will meet with another one eventually the day you need a job you will meet with one hear me look up you never go to a herbalist and return the same way you came did you hear what i said you never impossible every man communicates to you out of the strength of the spirit that assists him if you come to me for help and i'm a magician and you are watching me do the magic you finish and say nice man you think you just left but you did not live alone automatically that's why you will return again someone makes you return the people inside and outside both those who wanted to come or did not come the spirit of the living god drew you 
Is that true? When you understand this, brothers and sisters, you will not be impressed just by everything that happens physically. You will seek to know what is the motivation and the spirit behind the operation. Many of us are, are very, once you see supernatural things, you are happy. It doesn't matter whether it came from the pit of hell or wherever. You are just happy. Right? And right now we live in a generation where many people want to enter prophecy. Young people want to enter prophecy. And, and, and they want to enter world of knowledge. They want to enter dimensions. Now, nothing is wrong with that. It's because of the revival that is coming. But Satan is already preparing a major deception. Because he has seen it. That's one of the reasons why I'm teaching this. There is a major arsenal of deception. That the devil wants to release to the Nigerian church. Where there will be an outburst of a seeming outpouring. But it's not the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And you will see men move in charismatic dimensions. You will see people do things like angels. Right? Almost no limits to their impossibilities. And even they themselves will not know that they are being deceived. Are you seeing why the book of Revelations and the rest prays that even the elect can be deceived? I have prayed for many people in meetings. Anointed people. Ministers of the gospel. And as I minister to them, I may never get to tell them. But they may think what they are receiving in that meeting was impartation. What they were receiving was first deliverance from a strange spirit. Acts chapter 16. Don't turn there. Remember a lady who had the spirit of divination. Is that true? Did she give people word of knowledge? Please answer me. And the Bible says when some businessmen found her, they said you are exactly what you are looking for. And they started using her. You pay money to prophesy. You think if the people were not getting results, they will come back? They were getting results. She would say this will happen and it will happen. And when Paul, I like Paul. So, Two spirits. Paul had a word of knowledge. Her too, she had her own word of knowledge. Two spirits. Right? And Paul looks at her. And she begins to say, These are great men of God. You know what she was looking for? She was looking for partnership. Because human beings cannot discern the difference. So that she knew that Paul was only visiting the city. So let's be friends. So that when you leave the city, they will say, Ah, ah. If Paul is not here, I am here. Pastors, hear me. You must be careful in this day and age. The kinds of meeting and ministerial associations you join yourself with. There are many of us, they invite you everywhere to preach with everybody and your answer is yes, sir. You think you are saving sinners. You will enter the midst of devils without knowing. And they will corrupt the authenticity of the grace of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It will be a three-day meeting. You will be the one to start first. You will start and there will be mighty signs and wonders. When you finish, devils will come and hug you and you will snap together. And then the next day, people will come and they will say, just like the servant of God ministered yesterday, we are continuing. And people will catch strange spirit. There are meetings people have gone to. The moment they left the meeting, lust came upon their lives. And they started looking for ladies uncontrollably. They fell under the anointing. They rolled around and prayed in tongues. And the brother got up with miracle power and love for girls. Confusion. How can I be moving so much in the anointing? Right? Or somebody gets up and just begins to steal. The reality of spiritual news. We constantly interact with this law. Watch this. Spiritual laws are very powerful because they are not only creative, they can change realities in this physical realm. Are you following my teaching now? That is the reason why a magician can hold a handkerchief and say, Sam, hold it. They say, roll it. And Sam will roll it. And Sam will bring out a fowl. How does handkerchief change to a foul? Right? What they simply did was to take advantage of the laws of creation and manipulate it. Are you getting my point? And what is the goal? The goal is to convince you 
to come into partnership with the spirit that is assisting them the spirit that is assisting them is not assisting them for nothing i hope you know that when jesus was on the earth he was not the only one doing miracles i hope you know remember there was a certain time the disciples were angry and they were complaining that there are some people that are doing miracles somewhere oh, jesus you are the happening man where did this and we are your other people so if it's not you it should be us where are these strangers coming from again and jesus made a very controversial statement he said whoever is not what against us is for us ah spiritual laws so deborah could look at the stars and say stars i understand what you represent to the inhabitants of the earth align yourself in a way that the powers that the men use for war will not work and the bible says the stars fought for deborah with the permission of god joshua my namesake in the bible what happened to him he looked at the sun and said if this sun goes down they are going to kill our people because of that sun stand still right daniel went to bed and the secret was revealed and he said oh king i know what you saw you saw a being an image stand with the head of gold the breastplate of silver and you saw clay mixed with metal at his feet and he began to describe the fall of different empires the Grecian empire the babylonian empire and down to the new age that attempts to communicate towards virtual reality that's the last empire the feet that is a mixture of clay and iron one side the government is soft on another side the government is hard it's a mystery he saw it described brothers and sisters listen to me the the proof that god is in a thing is not just in the result but the spirit that initiates and sustains that process this is where i'm driving at the proof that a thing is of god the holy ghost must be both the initiator and the sustainer of that spiritual process otherwise it is fetish it is demonic it is from darkness even if it produces a real result i'm giving you the reason now is producing a real result because it was the manipulation of a physical law or a spiritual law and because of the advantage of the superiority of the realm of the spirit over the physical realm it will produce results watch this every spirit that initiates a process leaves a signature of itself upon that process are you hearing what i'm saying when julius Baga builds what do they leave they build their their logo is that true if pw builds they leave everything meaning if satan gives a child he will leave his signature right if satan heals the sick he will leave his signature when you know this you will know the reason why many people do not experience complete deliverance or complete healing or many there are many reasons but the major reason is because satan comes to steal kill and to destroy so although he uses spiritual law there must be darkness in his operation so satan will give you a miracle that will create another problem right one miracle that creates another problem and you come to him he gives your family money and then gives another person the spirit of drunkenness when you come as drunkenness is being solved barrenness follows right there is a signature one law being activated and causes another one that's why it is the blessing of the lord that can make rich and the there will be no sorrow there is always a signature of darkness that signs upon whatever comes from satan please hear me tonight not every open door is anointed the fact if you force a door in the spirit it will open in 
Thank you, Jesus Christ. There are secular musicians that sing. And for those of us who used to listen to their songs, or those who listen around us, we pass by. When you hear their voices, you know that this voice is, it has a glory that is not physical. Are you getting me? Spiritual laws manipulated, but they must pledge allegiance to the spirit that assisted them. That's why you listen to the music and physically you receive the glory that looks like from heaven. But it does something to your spirit, man. Because those laws help Satan to continue his agenda in the earth. Is God speaking to us tonight? So number one, realize that there are spiritual laws. Number two, realize that no man can activate the operation of spiritual laws until assisted by a spirit entity. Number three, there are many spirits that can activate spiritual laws. Spirits of the dead. All kinds of fallen spirits. But God has only one spirit that is permitted, authorized to search his heart and activate these laws according to his counsel for man. And the name of that spirit is the spirit of the living God. Is the Holy Ghost spirit of the living God. He's the whole is number one. We have not allowed the spirit of God to teach us these operations of the spirit so that we can align ourselves with these laws of the spirit. I may just touch on one of the law, or maybe two of the laws. Really, we'll just touch on two of those spiritual laws, and then we'll just end because I want us to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Laws of the spirit. Watch this. This guy is playing this. Did you know that he's activating a law, a spiritual law? What he's playing is a language. Your senses don't understand, but your spirit understands it. That's why you want to sit down and keep listening to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The melodies. You know why many people are addicted to secular music? Honestly, it's not just that they are bad people is that those melodies are languages they draw your spirit but because those who sing them have fraternized with certain spirits they draw you and they induce the operation of certain strange spirits so you hear him play what he's playing he's playing the strings and he's, he's doing something to your spirit man if a heavily sits down and plays you will keep enjoying and you will fall down but not under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You will fall down and stand up and something will land on you. Are you getting that now? So it matters what spirit you sit under. It matters what spirit produces the result that you celebrate. It matters not just that results are being produced. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If we do not rise to understand the laws of the spirit, we who are the sons of light, I want you to know that many people will run to the devil and he will give them the result they want by operating spiritual laws and take their souls in exchange. If we do not rise to contend for the power and the grace that will cause fruitfulness in the life of women, they will go to Babalawos every day. We can be grumbling and be calling everybody fake and calling everybody. We have to be careful because some of us are the ones who are fake. Not just because we are going to have a list, but we have refused to hold on to that which is real. See that? Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit must be the initiator and the sustainer of every spiritual knowledge we receive. This becomes our only guarantee to escape perversion. The Holy Spirit is the only guarantee that will escape perversion please let me surprise you and understand me you can take just this bible verbatim without the presence of the holy spirit you can still hold get into error are you getting me you can still hold the bible blindly and you will still get into error 
there are many people who go to Habalis. I counsel a lot of people. And some people come and meet me and they or their children or wives have gone to Habalis. And they say they go to the Habalis and they see many books and they see Holy Bible. Holy Bible was produced by a publishing company. Some of the people who produce this thing are not even born again. Is that true? They are just doing business. Zondervan or whatever publishing company. But it is the presence of the spirit of the living God. Meaning a demon spirit can still come upon this and give it another interpretation. That's why every sect of the Christian faith uses this. But they got another interpretation by the interaction of strange spirits. Genesis 11. That's what happened to Nimrod Kush, the origin of witchcraft. Nimrod Kush, these fallen angels appeared to him. In fact, before Genesis 11, the days of Noah... The Bible says strange aliens started coming upon the earth. Is that true? And they started sleeping with the daughters of men. Brothers and sisters, our ladies are smart people. Do you think an angel will just come with wings and horn and say, um, Marianne, I'm in love with you. Wouldn't you run? If you see a beast with tail, with horn, says, I'm, before he says, I'm in love, you will run away. These beings were not daft. They came and walked like men. I told you angels don't have wings. And there is no record of angels with wings in the Bible. Those who have wings are cherubims. In fact, angels appeared with people. They ate with people in the Bible. Is it not true? Angels ate with people in the Bible. When the angel appeared to Mary, she didn't say, I'm afraid. She wondered what the salutation, not the angel. Meaning they had been seeing them. When the angel appeared to Zechariah and all of these kinds of people, it is the seraphs that cover cartoon films have have created these things based on their interpretation and now we are not criticizing them but they have not helped us to understand the reality of spiritual things <laughs> hallelujah are we following now ah i sense the presence of god there are so many spiritual laws i want you to know that if I ask you what are the physical laws, you will name them. Sir Isaac Newton, in his study of mechanics, came up with several laws, right? There are, the, there are fundamental laws, the first, second, third law. There are all kinds of laws. Laws of thermodynamics, conservation of matter, physics and chemistry has all kinds of law. Newton's law of universal gravitation. There are all kinds of law. Chemistry, Lechetlier's principle of equilibrium. All kinds, the Schrodinger equation. All of these things are men and women coming together in an attempt to explain laws. There are laws that guide our understanding into quantum physics. Right? When we do chemistry, qualitative analysis and all of that we try to use the colors or or the things that emanate from solutions to be able to help us know what um, ion or whatever it is that is there all of these are physical laws in the same way there are spiritual laws spiritual laws spiritual laws bless you sam sorry hallelujah let's touch on two of these laws can we I read an article there is a powerful series on finance when we are teaching that one we'll share it but let me give you the preview the anchor scripture to that that series is thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over there was a relationship between the anointing on his head and the running over of the cup Thou anointed my head with oil and my cup running over. Hallelujah. Now, a wealthy man was once asked what the secret of his wealth was. And I got to find out that all he said was he found an ancient manual. Right? A manual that dates 2,300 years ago. Written by a Greek philosopher. That manual they seem they said seemed to contain some magic powers that even if you read just the title alone, fortunes will begin to come to you. 
I know some of you with all this message, you are saying, where is that manual? I can ask God for forgiveness. Where is that manual? <laughs> Repent. This is the year of the rain. Many of you have, have suffered. It doesn't matter what. Where is that? Some of you will go and browse it after this, this meeting. Is there an online version? Let me go come and read it and come for miracle service. Hallelujah. That means, you know what these Illuminati and secret societies and all these occultic organizations do? They are men and women who interacted with these spirit beings. And they reveal to them a lot of these spiritual laws. They reveal to them that this universe is not just sun. They reveal to them that air is not just air. Water is not just water. And they have excellently archived this principle through centuries. Right? Let me tell you. These were the very principles that kings used. Did you hear that in ancient times, king has, kings had scrolls? And certain things were written. In fact, part of the writings were magic formulas that would open certain doors. You see them in some of the films that you watch. All these things were an aberration of spiritual laws. What does that tell you? That means truly all things are available for life and godliness. If we can allow the Holy Spirit take the word of God and guide us, all things are really possible. Hallelujah. One of the most prominent business law among many business people is what they call the law of attraction. I, I, I don't believe it in that sense. And that law teaches that it is, it's, a, it's an extension of, of Newton's law of universal gravitation. That the earth is a living thing. Right? And it begins to say all kinds of things and it credits the power to modern nature. It makes it look like modern nature is supervising our, our, our activities. That's, that's demonic from the of hell the devil will never give credit to god and they have used it and made children brilliant in school they have used those laws how many of you have have have, have seen all these things they spoke about uh, they speak about hypnotism and all of this sort i know i'm stretching you tonight some of you are wondering who am i now am i a christian no, <laughs> listen i'm training you because one day many of you who want to go abroad you will go abroad and you will look for living faith and dunamis and redeem you will not find anywhere the only one you will find is a temple a temple you must greet the priest to resume your work and once you go there they will look at you and when you will not bow they will ask you questions and you say in koinonia I was taught abc and they laughed they say really you know lack of exposure is what is making some of us comfortable with this our christianity because we think the whole world is like zaria when you go out of this place and see the way people hate god you will know you need more to stand is that true that's why god refused you from going abroad because you would have you would have you would have converted two days you would have you would have left god by the time they bamboos your mind and then they tell you okay just read this portion and you read this portion and you go out and people start calling you from nigeria and sending you money so what is going on ah say let me read the other part that i didn't read again you think you won't do it hallelujah and the holy spirit has guided me through these spiritual laws a lot of them have been preached in the body of christ but even those who have preached them have not preached them with the level of revelation and gravity they just preach them because one person had another man of god preach it. hallelujah number one my goodness pray in tongues for one minute Say, Lord, open my eyes. Something is about to change in your life now. I've had several encounters through the word of God. I'm about to share with you. I've read it in books over the years. But when God began to open me up to it, it changed my life forever. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Let's see how far God will help us. We have to stop somewhere to pray. What you are about to learn must change you. I'm telling you, you will be so changed, you will be surprised. 
Many of you will carry the presence of God. You will carry the glory of God. You will see breakthroughs happen in your life in ways that will surprise you. Everybody read, please. One, two, read. Just the first portion, the first clause, one to read. Listen, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, it didn't say so he will become, so he already is. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he, so he. I learned and I have seen it. I taught the heads of department during our retreat a bit of it and the Lord has permitted me to share this now. That your life, listen to me, your environment and the quality of your life is a reflection of both your mindset and the sum total of your belief system. Listen to me. Your life, the quality of your life today the quality of your life, the quality of your environment, the quality of the works of your hands and the things that you do is a direct reflection of your ideologies, a direct re reflection of your perceptions about God, about life, about wealth, about whatever it is. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, that means your life will eventually open up and reveal to the physical what is in your heart. A powerful spiritual law that your life and your environment will eventually become a reflection of your reality. My goodness. My goodness. That means heaven is a revelation of God's mindset. Heaven is a reflection of the excellency of his thoughts. Earth is a reflection of the mindset of mankind. Selfishness. Watch this. I don't know if it was last week or so that, that I said it. I think I shared it during the retreat. Take a security man. Is that true? Take him to the office. Assuming you have a, a corporation with three story buildings the last story building belongs to the ceo take the security man to that story building leave him there for two weeks that office will start reflecting his mindset right immediately because when the man sits on that chair his mindset will refuse that reality first he will feel he does not qualify for it and then second, he will be afraid because he would think that after a while they will come and take it. So he will say, let me steal and loot. The first thing is he will remove whether, what did I say that day? Stabilizer. He will steal the stabilizer and run away and sell it. I say, how can you put a the big stabilizer, 10,000? I mean, the, the light is regulated from NEPA on or, or what, what they call them now? Power holding company. Praise God. So he will steal it. The next time you will see a beautiful artwork and you will say, how much will they sell this one, please? He said, 20,000. I said, go and sell it. There are two. Sell one and leave one. Right? You give him a glass cup. He says, no. Package them together. Let's sell it. Buy me a rubber cup, please. I'm, I'm contented. His mindset is already playing out. He will step into the place dirty and won't clean it. Right? He will eat food and leave it there. He will lead that document. He will take any piece of paper and clean water with it, not knowing what the document is. At the end of two weeks, that office has reflected his ideology. That's why those who get who wants to be a millionaire, none of them ends up being a true millionaire after five years because what they, are, what they have gotten does not subscribe to the truth, the principles that brought it. You never become wealthy by receiving dash money. I'm telling you this. There are people who receive 100,000 every month, maybe from parents or well-wishers, but the revelation they have about prosperity, about God, about money, 
drives wealth away from them. Is that true? Are you getting me? There are men of God whose churches you will never see miracles happen because there is a mindset about miracles they have that will never allow the Holy Spirit to bless people. Is that true? They don't want to see anybody fall under the anointing. They don't disturb us with noise. We want order in this church. And because of that, although they are God-fearing, the Holy Spirit wants to do great things but their ideology. So listen to me. The only way to change your life is to change your mindset and your perception. Listen to me. I was teaching the leaders and I taught them this. I told them, do you know why some ministries have the best of everything? Have you wondered why? You see certain ministries, the best keyboardists, the best um, computer um, people, the best sound people. Let me tell you why. Because the, the, the mindset of that man, right? will bring to that ministry people who are consistent with his ideology there goes the same beds of the same feathers do what so the bible says this in proverbs chapter 4 now right 4 verse 23 he says guard your heart you see that with all diligence this is the bible he said keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are what the issues the quality of your life is locked up within your mindset i believe god for anything i believe god can take this ministry to any height hallelujah i do not ever believe that there can be limitations in the work of god that's my mindset right that's why you see members of living faith for instance they are men of faith because they are a reflection of the conviction of the founder being a man of rugged faith it's in living faith you hear that a man died and they carried him and rubbed oil from his head to his toe till he came back and they come to testify do you have the gods to do that kind of thing it's in living faith you hear that a man died and for three days his wife was with the man on the bed and said you are still my husband you are alive and after three days he comes back to life he did not need to necessarily change them he first changed himself listen if you are not changed your words will not carry power your words only reflect the authority based on the change that has occurred in you that's why see let me tell you if Creflo Dollar or any of these people who are really well, they come right now and teach you on prosperity, some of you will be crying and you hate poverty forever. Not necessarily because what they are sharing is deep. They are communicating their reality. If Sam comes and holds the mic and begins to worship, what he is reflecting to you is an overflow of his reality. The deposit of the anointing within him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why you can listen to another musician and nod your head. And Frank Edwards, for instance, can sit on his keyboard and play the same song and you are crying. Brothers and sisters, leaders influence people by becoming the change they want the people to be. Right? That means when I become convicted by my ideologies, it will influence your perception and it will be easy to change you. That's why the more successful a man becomes, the easier it becomes to influence others. Because his life now has sufficient testimonies. Are we getting blessed? Many of us want to see changes in our lives in 2015. Hear me. Change will never come if you are still blaming people. You and God in partnership with his word are the only requirements for that change to come if you do not allow the word of god to renew your mindset i promise you you will never get anything in your life that has not first become a reality and a deposit in your spirit is somebody hearing what i'm saying that's where it is out of this that all kinds of religions bring a lot of metaphysics and what they call um, astral meditation, right? So they tell you, put a picture of the, the jeep. 
and you look at it and say, Ha! Ah! They say, Now see yourself in the Jeep. They say, I'm driving. You see, that is madness. But I'm only trying to tell you that they stole those laws. They are an aberration, a corruption of spiritual laws. That's why whenever God wants to bless a man, God convinces you and makes sure you agree with him. If you don't agree with him, it will never happen in your life. For a long time, God kept telling Abraham, I want to change you. Abraham could not get it because of his idol worship mentality. And God said, come out. I don't know what to do to you. Come out. He said, start counting the stars. Abraham was counting. And he was seen, he will count and miss. God said, do it, just continue. And his mind was acclimatizing. And Abraham said, wow. And the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. When the angel appeared to Gideon, Gideon said, oh, oh, don't deceive me. The angel took time. He didn't quarrel Gideon. Because he knew that if Gideon did not agree with him, nothing would happen. And Gideon said, I need proof. Let the cloth be wet. Let the ground be dry. He said, no problem. If that's what it takes to adjust your mindset to authorize us, go ahead. And Gideon said, now don't be offended. Let the cloth be dry. I, I want to convince myself. When Mary said, how shall these things be? Gabriel owed her an explanation. And it took time to explain. And she said, I believe. I, although I've never seen how a woman gives birth without a man. But I believe. And he said, be it unto me according to your word. Instantly she got pregnant. Zechariah had seen a lot of spiritual laws. That's why when he doubted Gabriel, he said, let's shut the mouth of this man. He's going to use the next spiritual law I'm about to teach you to change what we want to do. Is somebody learning something? Hear me. This is what makes ministry easy. I never spend time just wondering how do we publicize to get crowd. Koinonia will be a reflection of the quality of both the spiritual, the intellectual, and the physical ideologies of the leaders. You change a system by changing the leaders. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of our fathers did not change themselves. They took one bottle of Buddha and slapped you when you took one cup. Did you change? You see that? Because they have become a reality for you and they are saying, if I catch you drinking, that's the day I will kill you. Go and buy me Gulda Joe. They just finished talking to you and they said, go and buy it. Please hear me. If you want to see changes in your life, you are going to have to find out what ideologies have kept me where I am. There are some of you who never believe God can bless you. Right? As you are looking at me right now, if God even says he will give you 100,000, you say, Amen. You know that kind of unbelieving Amen. Listen, let's not make God look like a liar. This is the year of the rain. There are some of you who God wants you to walk in levels of anointing you have never seen. There are some of you who want to, God wants you to walk in certain depths. But do you believe him? There is nothing God has told me that I've not believed. I don't announce things till I'm sure I've believed it. When I believe it, I don't care who believes it again. So be it. The word of the Lord will come to pass. When God told Noah, he said, rain is coming. Build an ark. Do you think Noah just said, yes, sir? No. Noah would have said, God, my name is Noah. Your name is Yahweh. You're, you are almighty. We are not the same. Convince me. Convince me. When Noah was convinced, after 120 years, based on earth's timing, he still didn't give up. We talk about Abraham who waited 25 years. What of Noah? Noah waited 120 years. I'm sure people will say, look, when we were 50 years, when I gave birth to three children, this stupid man was busy building this ark. He has been searching for gopher wood around the whole world to build, searching for gum, searching for a lot of things. And then when he finished, we now saw him going to the jungle, looking for every kind of bed. Imagine what they would have told his wife. Say, madam, did you have to marry this man? But listen, one day, one day, his confidence in God showed him. Listen, you may be tightening now. You are seeing what God is doing in your life. 
you are seeing the anointing of the spirit upon your life it may not show the bible says why we look not at the things that are what seen but the things that are unseen i'm giving you a scriptural proof it said for the things that are seen are what temporal that means there is a level of confidence and renewal that can change anything you see before you brothers and sisters do you believe this pastor jakes is here he will testify right from when the ministry this used to be all of us we form a Aaron is here we form a circle and all just sit down on the floor i made certain statements like a fool right but today and listen this is not even it yet you wait and see what god will do with us oh i believe him i believe him absolutely Carve upon my heart this truth that sets me free according to your do you know your academic situation can change please i'm speaking to somebody do you know your destiny can change if you keep thinking we are the helpless nigerians i guarantee you after 50 years you will celebrate golden jubilee suffering but i will feed nations huh I may be rubbing granite oil as, as, as Vaseline, but a day will come. Why we look not? Brothers and sisters, as I look at you, I don't see the weak you. That's why I say, as I look at you, I see nations. Nations. Who told you you will not be the mother of nations? I'm 30 years. So what? So what about 30 years? Would you stand and say, I saw when i was 23 i know that the lord told me i'm giving birth to a prophet and it's going to arise that vision is still there i am convinced yeah the things that we see are subject to change one day you are taking your bath and you see growths and tumors all around your body you just say hey this is how i'm going to die cancer and the devil said, not just cancer, fibroid, the fibroid. Notice, do you know that many sick people may carry certain sicknesses for years and never fall sick because doctor has not told them. Now doctors, don't be, don't be sad. I'm just saying, because you, do, you did not know it was not your reality. Many men were carrying prostate cancer carrying all kinds of things many ladies carrying fibroids carrying a lot of things and nothing happened to them but the day they looked and said do you know do you really know the implication of ss are you aware that the way that this has been happening you won't get a child in fact the way we are looking cat is your womb self it's not looking like the womb of a human being you just say, ah and you now start saying that means no marriage a godly brother comes and you say my brother i'm pitying you you i don't want you to suffer in this life reality i hope you are laughing and you are seeing i'm telling you the secret to some of these results that you see these are my contemplations those who know me know that my reality is defined i never surround myself with nonsense you don't come around me gossiping and, and gossiping and speaking because i know that i am absolutely in control this has become the mirror to my world this is how i see things i only see things consistent when i'm going for a meeting i know there will be an outpouring of the spirit i don't care whether they have faith or not i don't care whether they can believe or not whether they are instrumentalists to charge the atmosphere or not is irrelevant when i step there i know that i bring an atmosphere i carry my own spiritual climate me and the holy spirit a team the workers in this ministry have received of this spirit that's why in the afternoon they arrange chairs and they dress who guaranteed them that you were coming did you sign a form we having the same spirit of faith as it is written koinonia hear me tonight we are only 23 or 24 days into january you can sit down with this your belief system and you will celebrate christmas in this condition or you can rise up 
Ah, but I know people who love God, they have died. I know people who love God, things have happened. Brothers and sisters, we are talking about you here, not your neighbor. The just shall live by his faith. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? I read a story of somebody 109 years, still alive. In fact, three women, they were even putting makeup. 109 years. Ah! Alive and strong in the midst of this wicked world. They don't expect. What do you expect in your life? See, these are powerful spiritual laws. The second law, give me five minutes. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Quickly please. The creative power of words. I know that we have been taught that words are powerful. But I want to show you the spiritual dimension of words. There is a reason why God called himself the word. You know why God named himself the word. It says and God did what? And God not and God wished not and god expected not and god complained he said the earth was dark and void and formless and god the talking spirit said the word said there doesn't mean and god declared what it meant was god commanded it to be so the word said there does not just mean and god recited no god didn't recite anything Say, I'm healed, I'm healed. That's recitation. You are not talking. What many people have been talking in the body of Christ that they are calling confession is recitation. I'm telling you this. Con the word confess comes from the Greek word homologio. It's not just repeat what you say. It's you are giving an empowerment to say it. I prophesy as I was commanded. He said, and God said, let there be light and there was light and you read the verses down the line it says and god said and he saw and god said and he saw and god said and he saw listen to me words are powerful because when you speak a word it activates spiritual laws and activates other laws listen to me there are many laws that make realities to work the key to activating their operation is in words. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when you speak, whether you realize it or not, something is loosed and something is tied. It depends on what is loosed and what is tied. Please follow me. The Bible says, how did he put it now? Whatsoever you bind, right? Do you bind just by tying a rope? Jesus looked at a fig tree and he didn't need to say the law of fruitfulness cease operation from this tree the law of regeneration stop i command the fertilizer don't enter the root again he just used words and activate all the laws that needed to be activated for that tree to shrink are you hearing what i'm saying so instead of learning all the laws god gives you the keys that activates them are you getting what i'm saying so when I declare and I say, I am healed, I release a lot of spiritual laws. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we stand now and I declare, I say in the name of Jesus, the power of God will start moving in this place. Suddenly you hear people falling and shouting. Why didn't it happen now? Listen. The words that I'm speaking are activating both the operation of angels, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Our words activate the dimension of God that is revealed in a meeting. That's why when during miracle service, the worship people sing songs that invoke that dimension. Are you getting what we're saying? If you know this, you will know that from morning till night, some of you have activated woes and tragedies in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, let's, let me show you a few scriptures. Our time, uh, I've been fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, we've been closing so late. We'll see what we can do about it. It's just the passion in my heart. 
Psalm 141 verse 3. Media, please help us. Let's rush so that we get up and round up. Psalms 141 verse 3. He says, set a watch, O Lord, before where? And do what? Keep a door. Knowing that every time I speak, my mouth didn't just open. A door opened in the spirit. The opening of my mouth is the opening of a door in the spirit. He says, set a watch. Oh God, this my mouth can lead me in trouble. So set a watch. Set a watch over my mouth. Numbers chapter 14 verse 28. Numbers 14 verse 28 Very quickly Everyone read Want to read 28, 28 Say unto them As truly as I live saith the Lord As ye have spoken in my ears So I will do what? As I hear you say, not wish. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord. He already called you redeemed, but he said, say it. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the anointing of the, the anointed of the Lord say so. They are not reminding themselves. They are activating that reality. Everybody say, when I speak, I activate realities. Say it again. When I speak, I activate spiritual laws. That's right. It depends on what law you activate. But something must be activated. When you understand this, you will know that words are expensive. Let's look at just two more verses. Proverbs 18, verse 21. If you can look at that. Proverbs 18. You can write it down. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Listen, death and life are where? Did he say death and life are on top of your head? Did he say death and life are? He says death and life are in the power, the proceeds of the tongue, and like a seed, they that love it shall eat the fruit that grows from that seed. The Bible says the seed is the word in the parable of the sower. What is the seed? Meaning every time you speak, you sow the seed. Is that true? He said the seed is the word. So when I begin to speak, even in tongues, I'm sowing. I'm activating laws in the spirit. When I begin to pray, my day is blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I am lifted. I'm activating spiritual laws. And I authorize the spirit of God to begin to schedule opportunities. To schedule certain things. And you find out that after prayer, you activate laws of favor. As you are stepping out, you bump into your destiny helper. You call it coincidence. The Bible calls it life that your tongue released. That's why Job said, what I have feared most has come upon me. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Please, let's read it together. He that keepeth his mouth. Stop. How do you keep your life? Insurance. Answer me. I'm not against insurance. Do life assurance, life insurance. But the Bible, the written word of God, the living logos. He that keep. How do you keep your life in the spirit? By keeping your mouth. Papa Hagin said this. Kenneth Copeland said this. Those guys said these things. So many people. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. He said, I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing, but I can only advise you, choose. He said, he that keepeth his mouth, keepeth what? He said, but he that openeth wide his lips, 
speaking nonsense any day any time and saying it does not matter it says that he shall have what as a fruit brothers and sisters listen ladies when we are when we are about to pray in the midst of your prayer you will lay your hands on your womb and pray and say no devil no devil are you hearing what i'm saying some of you are afraid right now the rate at which ladies are scared of fibroid is alarming you are just eating too much you look at your stomach and say this this thing this is how it starts i have the power to create and i have the power to destroy the power of words is in its ability to activate spiritual laws that's what i want you to know many of us have been taught that words are powerful but what makes it powerful words are keys in the spirit they activate laws so now it's not just blind confession oh i'm rich i'm rich i'm rich i'm rich as if you are reciting a magic formula no that's madness you speak out of the abundance of knowledge that when i declare that i am blessed i am activating something you wait until we have the other series that we have there are so many things that you will learn this year two laws you have learned tonight the first one is that there are spiritual laws and that one of the laws listen is that to change your outside you change what is inside stop wasting your time whatever you don't like outside get the renewal the mind component of what you want outside bill johnson got it right when he wrote the book the supernatural power of a transformed mind i don't expect this ministry to ever go down we'll keep speaking it we'll keep rising i expect every one of you in this year to break on every side and whenever i pray for you that's what i pray I don't pray blindly and say, Lord, eh, your will be done. I know what his will is. His will is not fake. His spirit has revealed his will in his word. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as thy soul prosper. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. We will pray for just five minutes. But I want us to take this serious because as we are praying, something will be happening to you. Lift your voice and thank him for the word. The reality of spiritual laws. Bless him. Bless him for the word. Don't trivialize what you have received. It has changed kings. It has made champions. You only arise and shine when your light comes. And then the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Hallelujah. Three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. You are going to say, Lord let the ministry of the holy ghost be strong in my life so that you will open me up to these deep mysteries lift your voice and pray pray no matter your spiritual level even if you are just visiting for the first time pray from the depths of your heart Please pray inside and in the overflow. Lift your voice and pray. It's the year of the rain. Holy Spirit, overshadow me in a new dimension. Open me up to the and the depths and the dimensions hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you are going to pray and say lord 
whatever needs to change in my life for my the quality of my life to change let the word of god change it change my inner reality change my mindset lift your voice and cry passionately your life is at the mercy of this prayer lord i desire a new level of excellence a new level of grace a new level of possibility in my life go ahead and pray help me to believe in you help me to believe in you help me to believe in you as the healer help me to believe you are able help me to believe you are mighty change my mindset change my perception change my perception about prosperity change my perception about protection change my perception about spiritual power change my perception about my academics change my perception about my marriage change my perception about my ministry about my business about my job about my husband about my wife about my organization lift your voice and pray your life is a reflection an eventual reflection of your convictions of your perceptions oh it's a powerful spiritual law i pray you believe it i pray you believe it hallelujah last prayer point father imprint in my spirit the revelation that my words are powerful go ahead and pray imprint in me lord i cancel every negative word that i've spoken in my life i cancel it by the blood of jesus confessions i made when i was angry i cancel it by the blood of jesus dangerous laws i activated that kill favor in my life confessions that killed my prayer life confessions that killed my my integrity lift your voice and pray koinonia outside make sure you are praying no matter how far you are no matter how far you are connect with us in prayer hallelujah hallelujah now find a neighbor and for the next one minute i like you to activate laws over that person's life activate favor activate grace activate hunger for spiritual things close every door of witchcraft close every door of failure find a serious neighbor that came to koinonia to pray lift your voice and pray I bless this house in the name of Jesus. I command favor upon your people. I command favor. I command long life. I sow seeds of greatness. I sow seeds of power. I release the operation of the Holy Ghost upon lives, upon families. I command supernatural dreams. I command visions. I release encounters with the Holy Ghost. Encounters with the spirit of might. Encounters of favor. Encounters of power. I command no death, no accident, no terrorism, 
no bomb blast no witchcraft in the name of jesus the son of the living god i command every law that has been activated that is being manipulated by darkness over your life to bring failure to bring woes i cancel it by the blood of the eternal covenant bless your neighbor i bless you i bless you i bless you let the fountain of the heavens be open for you let men look for you may they bless you may you become the subject of discussion i bless your academics i change your result i change your genotype i command promotion to your job increase in your ministry increase in your business increase in your anointing hallelujah lift your hands listen what i'm teaching you now is the true spirit of prophecy many people speak but the problem is we don't we have not been taught what happens in the spirit when we speak in one minute i want to release words in your life listen now you know what happens listen demonic spirits enchantments and spells all they do is to activate laws against you that's all that happens when they enchant things the bible says in job chapter 5 that you will be delivered from the scourging tongues of men men use their tongues to tie your destiny men use their tongues to tie your womb but i come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood lift your hands and receive this prophecy in the name that is above all names i command opportunities i command opportunities i command favor in the name of the son of the living god i command favor i activate favor from the realm of the spirit the reign of favor the reign of goodness the reign of favor the reign of goodness in the name of jesus christ i speak against every infirmity that has challenged your body the power that spoke it into being i cause that power and i command that that infirmity leaves your body now these hands that are lifted may men bring finances to that hand i prophesy it in the name of the lord jesus that this week that is coming these hands that are lifted i tell you many of you will return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ whatever manipulates your intelligence so that you don't understand what is taught whatever tears the devil sowed among the wheat in the name that is above all names i release you from that power now hear me anyone here who has been caused by your parents they did not know they were angry but they didn't know they activated a law that has made things to work against you i stand under this apostolic office tonight i reverse that law in the name of jesus i reverse that law in the name of jesus for everyone that cursed you i bless you i bless you some of us everything works for everybody until it gets to your turn things are so hard a little thing you have to suffer in the name of jesus in this year of the rain i prophesy upon your life let supernatural ease come to your life whoever must call you and help you and open the door for your next level wherever they are 
in the name of Jesus the same way wise men saw the star and they went to Jesus with gifts I call them wherever they are may they come to you in the name of Jesus I release upon you grace beginning from today whatever you do will prosper every enchantment that killed your prayer life so you stop speaking you stop waking up in the night to pray and orchestrate things powers were invoked to make you sleep and not wake up and pray right now i stretch my hands to the heavens and in the name of the god of heaven i command those spells broken may your prayer life resurrect in the name of jesus hear me the grace to wake up in the night and speak into the womb of the morning i release that grace upon you ladies whoever has called you weak and whoever has said you will not amount to anything in the name of the lord jesus i cancel that statement now in the name of jesus hear me whatever your life has been associated with before now sickness failure lack of spiritual fire in the name of jesus i change that situation now i change that situation now i change that situation now hear me any human agent responsible for where you are except i am not called of god in the name of jesus we release a sword of judgment we release a sword of judgment hear me i say it again that if there is any human agent that has participated in the downfall of your life your finances and your family i command judgment now i command judgment now at the brother that shared the testimony 2005 to 2015 whatever wants to tie you that when others are moving you will not move forward in the name of Jesus I release you today in the name of Jesus hallelujah your assignment for this week as we prepare for the miracle service next week friday will be fire in this place we will engulf this place with fire hallelujah please make sure you invite everyone you truly love god is good this is the year of the rain there is no distance that is too far for anybody who truly wants solution in their lives are you hearing me there are people that have been needlessly barren for decades what for what for is there no balm in Gilead? The problem is we are talkers. We speak a lot of rubbish without revelation. But let me tell you, not everyone is fake. There are men that have taught something truly in the spirit. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give him thanks. We're out of time. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Our time is up, but I just want you to be patient for a few minutes. Those who have never given their lives to Christ. Now listen, this is very serious. This is one of the reasons why we stand. In the realm of the spirit, your connection matters. If you are not in Christ, inside and outside, or at one time you have committed your ways to God, but for some reason you found yourself, your life just went haywire, and you're saying, Lord, I want to start 2015 on a very good note. Wherever you are, inside and outside, I'm giving you an opportunity to come out here right now quickly to give your life to Jesus and to rededicate your life. Don't wait for anybody. You know yourself, the Lord is speaking to you. Encourage them. Encourage them if there are any people. Inside and outside, no matter how far, this is very important. God bless you. God bless you. They are coming. I appreciate them. Don't be afraid. 
the devil is a liar koinonia clap for them encourage them we call the devil a liar tonight sister don't sit back there it's a new season it's time to get serious with jesus it's time to say lord i give up everything i mean business with you i mean business with you they are coming from outside celebrate them they are coming to jesus they are coming to jesus they are coming to jesus keep coming we are out of time but keep coming they are coming to jesus as you come here begin to talk to jesus christ the king of kings and the lord of lords god bless you keep coming keep coming talk to the lord passionately from your heart talk to the lord and say lord it's over i mean business with you tonight beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kapos, kete branda kata bako tosko kopre kete kene kapa. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.